Hello. Uh, how are you guys doing? <laughs> yep. It's been a while. I'm back. I'm back. That was uh, footage that I took from Comic-Con over in London. And the two guys in there, you probably know one of them. That was Freddy with the long hair and Robert with the short hair. And it does seem like it was a weird <laughs> publicity for Xbox and PlayStation. But it was cool in, in the area. There was this, It was a particular area in the convention where you could just play old school video games on um, it was Xboxes and PlayStation 2s. So I thought it was fun. Just went around on my iPhone, took some footage, and James decided to put that up as... I mean, I quite like it. I think it's quite a good light like, starting, that like, opening thing. But yeah, I hope you guys are all doing well. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't we have a look at the people in the chat? Who do we have in the chat? We have um, Jedi Master EJ saying hello there. Hello, Jedi Master EJ. I'll bring it up today, James, because uh, I think you're busy. Um, we do have a guest that's coming on the show uh, later on, but um, we have some technical difficulties at the moment. Uh, I, I hope you're doing well, Jedi, Ma Jedi Master EJ. We also have Geek Studios in the chat saying, hey, everyone. Hey, Geek Studios. Um, Leroy Kong is there as well saying, great live. Thank you. We only just started. <laughs> Hopefully, it'll be a good live. And Dan Zig saying, Waza, how, how are you, Dan Zig 1979? And I do believe we also have Curtis in the chat. Curtis saying, yo. And uh, I think that's that's it. But uh, I hope you guys are all doing very well uh, today. Oh, we've got Charlie Wilson in the chat as well saying, what's up, SC crew? SC crew, I think you mean. Is that Screen Crush? Are you talking about Screen Crush? That's the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I hope you're doing very well as well, uh, even though you got the name slightly wrong, ever so slightly wrong. But yeah, so um, we we do have uh, a guest coming on a bit later on, but we also have in the waiting in the shadows, as usual, we have the Mr. The one and only, the Clint Baker. What's up, gang? <laughs> How, How are you guys doing? doing? <laughs> yeah, it's good to be back on small screen Friday party time. Party How you time. been, man? I've been uh, I've been okay. Um, trying to get back into the swing of things after Comic Con, it's not been very easy, and also flat hunting, which is not easy at all. That's not so nice. Have, have but... your bruises recovered after being thrown out of Comic Con? Oh yes, yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we we know uh, it, was your, it was your brother's fault. It was not your fault. <laughs> got and yeah getting all sorts of things afterwards as well copyright strikes and what oh. have you after yeah that was that wasn't great but you know what we had a good time we've still got lots of content coming out coming up uh from comic-con so that'll be fun uh, i think james james is overworked as it is so um so we're taking our time with that stuff <laughs> but how, how's how's your week been nope uh, my week is going great, man. I've been staying busy. Did some uh, music recording yesterday with a with a friend, and uh, you know, been doing doing my other shows and hanging out. I, uh, we had uh, answering for a friend yesterday. That was fun. Yep. Uh, Halloween episode, and uh, um, I got to see Beetlejuice the other day, uh, which you know doesn't sound like anything special when I've seen it a hundred times. But then I realized that it's my favorite movie, maybe ever. It's so good. <laughs> It's definitely up there for me, Beetlejuice. Yeah. It's one of the it's one of those films you kind of forget about until you watch it again. You go, Oh my god, this is so good. This film. I hadn't seen it in ages. You know, I mean when yeah. I was a, when I was, you know, uh, early teens, I've seen it a million times. It was always it was one of those movies that was always on TV every time I turned on the TV. But uh I watched it the other day and it, I'll just say it brought joy to my heart. And yeah. Yeah. So uh and that's that's what's fun. I, that's what another reason I love uh the Halloween season is because you do things like watch uh oh I'm gonna watch Halloween, you know what I mean, and watch fun, scary stuff and, and I think it's cool. Are uh you do you dress up for Halloween? Uh I have done on occasion. Uh I haven't done in a while actually. Um for me, my favorite thing to do for Halloween is literally just watch horror movies. Um, that's what I like to do and eat a lot of candy, as you call it over in America. Like the, the film it? <laughs> sweets. Sweets. <laughs> sweets. <laughs> it sounds a bit silly, doesn't it? Yeah. But, 
uh yeah i've uh, it's it's something i've always I actually recently just watched halloween kills you mentioned halloween mm-hmm. what a rubbish movie <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> I, I, I watched it and i was like seriously like he come on how many times do you have to stab him you literally shoot the guy in the head he still comes back alive it's a bit silly it gets to the point where it's like it's a bit too much now he's and the whole killed the, He's killed so much that he's become supernatural. He's, yeah, literally. He's more he's more than a being, he's a state of mind, is he? Uh, who knows? <laughs> who knows what he is now? Honestly. We did a, we did a whole show on Halloween the other we it was really fun because we we talked about uh Halloween kills. We also talked about uh Halloween resurrection with which oh, is uh, the Rob is that the Rob Zombie one? No, it's the one with uh it's the one that's got Busta Rhymes in it. Uh, oh, okay. yeah and then and also uh uh katie sackoff she's in it too she's young oh. and then uh and then we watched uh, uh another one that the one's got uh paul rudd in it which is which was hilarious so it was it was a good week uh watching all of the halloween's good times you lie i don't <laughs> lie i mean sometimes I, maybe i prefer i preferred the first um halloween the the, the reboot the recent reboot Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I like I liked that one a lot. I thought it was kind of recaptured the original. I'm a big, massive John Carpenter fan, so I really love the original, even though it hasn't aged particularly well. I don't think if you watched it again, it's a bit like it's a bit it's quite cheesy, but I like it. And uh, and then the new one, that new one came out. I was like, oh, yeah, David Gordon Green could do something really good with this. But honestly, this this <clears throat> latest one, Halloween Kills, I think they took it just a tiny, like not even a tiny bit too far. It was way too far. They're going to do right. one more. Yeah, and I don't know where they're going to go with that one. I, but, think, it's, you know... <laughs> I think it's called like Hollywood. They, this whole batch that they're doing, it's, it's supposed to be a trilogy. So yeah. I think it's like ho- uh, Halloween Dies or Halloween Ends, ends. or something. I think it's yeah. called Halloween Ends, yeah. Uh, we'll know. see. Yeah, we'll see. But um, what, uh, James, do you, do, do, do is, is all good? Do you want to go through the comments? Okay, let's go through the comments. So we've got Geek Studios saying, hi, everyone. Hi, Geek Studios. I hope you're doing well. Uh, who else hello do we there. have? Hello there. Yes, Jedi Master EJ said hello there. We already said that. I think James is on the phone. Hello there. And who else do we have in the chat? I think that's it. Yeah, we said that. Danzig was up. What's up? <laughs> Curtis is saying, yo, yep. Yeah. <laughs> this is a, this is, we're rehashing old ground. <laughs> I think James. <laughs> James did, we say, did we say hi to all these guys? Yes, Sorry. I said hi well, to all these people. They deserve already. another hi. That's for uh, sure. And uh, we got Kazakhs that's just joined the chat. So let's say hi to Kazakhs. What? Yeah, Kazakhs, you better be here, man, because I yeah. just messaged him. Edward, uh, are we going to fight yeah. over the comments? We're going to fight because you, you're, not, you're not on it. You're not on it tonight, man. I was I was on tech support, brother. Okay. Jeez. <laughs> Um, should we? Uh, what's going on? I don't even know what's going on in my own show anymore. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. Danzig waves. Should we bring in the, uh, our guest? Yeah, uh, this is uh, the legendary Tom the Falco. I've been bothering him for uh, a couple months now, uh, messaging and just you know generally annoying him, and he finally succumbed and agreed to <laughs> to come on the show. So, uh, without further ado, we will bring in. Uh, I'll find the appropriate clip for him. Oh dear. Wow. <laughs> there you Hello, go. Tom. <laughs> what the heck was that? <laughs> I don't know. What? <laughs> James likes these clips. <laughs> hey, hey guys. Thanks hey, for having hey, me. No problem. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, thank you so much. Super pleasure. Super pleasure to have you on. Uh, I remember uh, reading comics the last 40 years. The the one name besides Stanley that would always stick out would be Tom DeFalco. Editor, Tom DeFalco. Yes. <laughs> it's great to have you on. There's a lot a lot of uh, a lot of the books you worked on have shaped a lot of uh, our influences and our inspirations, that's for sure. So well, I, I uh, hope in a good way. I'm doing oh, yeah. great. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, life is good for me. You've you've been on the the tour quite a bit uh, on the shows lately, uh, pushing your Indiegogo campaign. Uh, yeah, and I, I think uh, I think it's time for me to shut up after this. Um, <laughs> yes, I. How, I how, huh? 
how are you how are you finding it uh the indiegogo campaign yeah well the, the appearing on the shows and doing all the youtube stuff you love it I'm, uh you know it it Listen, I'm a guy who, who who decided early on to to spend most of my room locked up in, you know, most of my life locked up in a room by myself for eight <laughs> to ten hours a day. So, you know, I, I often tell people I I'm not much of a talker. I'm a writer. I communicate better in second draft. Ah, uh, um, yes. I, I'm know. kind of the same way with my edits. Um, so, can you tell us about the right project? Let's hear, let's hear you talk instead of on the second draft. Apologies. Okay. So, so the right project is a, uh, it's a concept that uh, Ron Friends and I got together, uh, you know, a while ago. And we, um, we, we just wanted to do, you know, something, something that we owned and that we thought would be a lot of fun. Uh, we, we kept saying to ourselves, we're, we're going to work on it in our spare time. And uh, that, that's an animal we've never been able to capture. Um, I'm, I'm still waiting for the spare time to show up. Uh, uh. But recently, um, a, a company got in touch with us, and they, um, they do augmented reality and uh, some, some very – cool things with the comic books where they uh where you can hold your phone over the comic books and see you know three-dimensional images and i have no idea how the heck any of this stuff works and uh they've tried to explain it to me a few times but you know uh and they and they said hey do you have any characters that you know fit into uh you know a digital universe <laughs> and as it happens our our character uh, in the right project is a digital avatar. Mm. Um, so Ron and I said, okay, hey, yeah, we got a character. And they said, terrific. And, um, you know, one thing led to another, and suddenly I found myself in the middle of a, a, a crowdfunder. Uh, and <laughs> this, this is something that uh, people have been asking me and Ron to do for many years. Um but the uh, truth of the matter is we're both too lazy to uh, embark on such a thing. <laughs> like, <laughs> these crowdfunders are a lot of work. Yeah. You know? And, um, and Ron, uh, you know, Ron likes to spend uh, most of his day uh, locked, locked in his room, drawing pictures. <laughs> and, you know, I like to spend most, most of my, my time, you know, typing on the computer. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not a big social media guy or anything else like that. Anytime I turn on my computer, I think I should be working. Yeah. Right. right. And we, you know, we also uh, drag Sal Buscema into this because he's, he's a member of the family. He's been a member right. of the family. Probably when, when you announced the Indiegogo, I saw that and I was like, wow, Ron Lim and, and, and Sal Buscema. I say Buscema because I never heard of it, but Buscema. Uh, that's quite the team you have there. Well, you know, we're, we're lucky. We, you know, we, we have a nice extended family. Mm. Um, we, you know, Ron and I think that this may be the last time this, this extended family is together because one of us, I don't want to, I don't want to mention any names or embarrass Sal, um, thinks that he's going to be allowed to retire after this. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how it works in the industry. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, and, and 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 knowing the the guy, he's going to take art classes at, at uh, <laughs> which is uh, you know something his brother did a, a number of times. John Buscema would re every once in a while, John Buscema would retire, and I'd say, John, what are you going to do with your time? And he'd go, I'm taking art classes. I've never I've never quite learned how to sketch properly. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, and one of them, either Sal or John, once said to me, you're either getting better every day or you're getting worse. You never stay. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm, I'm lucky. I'm surrounded by guys who are getting better every day. You know, me, I think I'm on the downward trend at this stage of the game. Are, are you kidding? Mm -hmm. Look at you. You're on the YouTube tour, man. You've made it. You finally I'm, I'm made on, it. <laughs> hey, yeah, I'm on the YouTube tour. <laughs> uh, uh, 
So the right pr uh, project, well, not the right project, but the right was actually an image one shot at one point, wasn't it? It was. It was. Yeah. We we ended up, you know, for for a sort of reason, we we never actually published that comic book. Um, we got involved with some TV guys and blah, 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 you know, and that's why we put it on, on, on the side until, uh, until we had some, you know, the so-called spare time. Right. You know, and, and uh, did you find it smarter to go the Indiegogo route? Uh, um, <laughs> I'll let you know when it's over. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good answer. I, you know, the, the one thing that's exciting to me about the Indiegogo route is we can release digital, you know, additional digital packages to all of our uh, our uh, backers. Yeah. And um, one of the packages that we're going to uh, – we plan if we hit our $12,000 stretch goal is um, uh, we're going to uh, re reprint the first – well, not reprint. We're going to print the, f the first 11-page uh, story uh, in pencils and also the plot. So, oh, cool. you know, guys who have um, always wondered, you know, how, you know, how does a plot work? How does it, how do pencils work? That sort of stuff. They'll get to see it, you know. They'll get to see it in, in front of their eyes. Like the behind um, the scenes and, and the, uh, the, the way you produce the comic book, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. You know, since I'm getting old myself and may retire in a few years, I figured I can I can release all the secrets. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, real cool. That is very it, cool. Yeah. It, it's like like a, it's something I've I've wanted to do. I um, you know, back in the day when when I could actually go to comic book conventions, I would often have a um, I had to write comics panel, and in the course of that, I would hand out you know, copies of what a plot looks like or a full script or a storyboard. Right. And, you know, all the would-be writers in the audience are so fascinated by that stuff. And, um, yeah, I, th I think it's good to, to see how these things actually look. Yeah. Yeah, seeing, seeing how the process is, is done has always intrigued me. And, like, you remember the uh, Wizard back in the good old days, uh, Wizard Magazine, where they used to get uh, – um, who was that artist that would do uh, Mike W. Barr? He would do how to draw comics and stuff, right? And then there was uh, how to draw comics the Marvel way. Um, yeah, it's very interesting to see how it's made. Uh, how did you come up with the right, the concept of the right project? It, 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 creation is always a, a crazy thing. I think that, um, um, you know, Ron Friends, uh, when we were working on Spider Girl, would often draw these pictures of of these characters, and um, you know, that that were possible villains and that sort of stuff. And he uh, he drew the the Mister Right character, and I thought, wow, this 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 guy this guy looks interesting. I think there's something we could do with it, and I'd rather not waste him as a villain. Mm. Um, in in those in those days. Uh, a lot of times we we propose things to Marvel and they'd say, "Yeah, sure, go ahead." Um, <laughs> yeah, a lot of that was because we would actually produce it, and all their their big superstars would would promise to produce a lot of things which uh, never saw the light of day. Right. And uh, you know, like I said, we had this on, on the sudden. At one point, we talk in the image, and uh, decided to use it use it for image. It was a, you know, it, it's it's a fascinating character. It, it, there's a uh, a uh, computer program that uh, gives mass to holograms, hmm. and then um, a uh, a young gamer messes around with the program and uh, kind of creates his own superhero, and uh, and fun and games go from there. Uh, we, uh, yeah, it's it's a goofy thing, and I look, if you're looking for a grim and gritty, dark comic book, this ain't for you. <laughs> oh no, you can you can tell right from from the uh, the art that yeah what it represents. Uh, I get I'm getting a uh, some Mike Perobeck uh, Batman animated series vibes on there uh, from that art with 
the way the form is, it's absolutely great. Um, yeah, you, we need more books like that, to be honest with you, out in this day and age. I know when uh, DC's New 52 came out, um, it was really dark and gritty. It just wasn't for me, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. And I like the clean art style that uh, has been done here. So it's great. Well, I, I think Ron is one of the... <laughs> one of the top storytellers, visual storytellers the, the comic book industry has ever seen. Mm. Um, what, one of the things we do in, in this book, um, if, you're, if you're tired of uh, mega crossovers and company-wide uh, <laughs> guest stars and that sort of stuff, we, we actually have three complete stories in, this, in, in, in the first issue. Oh, uh, two, two 11 pages and a five pager. And um, you know, at one point, uh, the last time we did something for Marvel was an 11-page, I think, Thunderstrike story. And I remember the editor saying, wow, you guys stick more more than an 11-page story than there's usually two or three issues of our regular books. Um, but, you it's know. More bang for your buck. Yeah, I mean, listen, comic books are too expensive these days. So we, we really have to be worth the price. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I, mean, I, don't, I don't know what it's like in, I mean, I'm used to buying comic books in the UK and France where most, m most comic books tend to be, uh, they, they put all the issues together. And um, I know in America, I know uh, maybe James, you, you do this as well. Like we don't really have the long boxes where we are. So we tend to get all of the stories together with the new 52. It was like that when I, when I was, um, oh, the graphic was, novels? Yeah, graf well, they're graphic novels. That's what they call that. And that's the only way you can really get comics. It's quite niche, if, like even more niche than buying, like, buying comic books is still. Uh, it's quite niche to find like a place that will do long boxes and, and things like that, and just like individual issues. I've always been really intrigued. You know, if you see behind me, I've just got like full graphic novels, nothing else, because that's all you can get. But yeah, well, I mean, it's quite, it's quite sad that the that it's kind of going the way it is though i think now it's just getting so expensive to be a comic book um enthusiast which i suppose is also why a lot of people tend to unfortunately uh, get them illegally as well which isn't so good well come come to canada and i'll show you all the long boxes you want edward oh yeah <laughs> yeah it's, it's quite it's <laughs> quite a of, long journey <laughs> lots of long boxes in north america that's for sure yeah and uh the uh uh, when we had uh, Chuck Pinot on the show a couple weeks ago, and we were talking about the indie comic book scene with Kickstarters, uh, that's been that's been really good for um, in Kickstarter and Indiegogo. That's been really good for the indie, independent comic book companies because mm -hmm. uh, you're actually shipping out single issues direct to the consumer, right? Um, and you're getting your books in stores too. So and that's why I'm excited about this Indiegogo. Um, yeah, it would have been great if you if you had it on Image. Um, but then I probably never would have gotten a hard copy, to be honest with you. I would probably just ordered a digital version of the right project because I'm in a small town. There's no comic book stores in the small town here right now, and especially with the pandemic, right? With an Indiegogo, you can get it shipped right to your door. So Yeah. yeah. And, and that, that's what I miss about, like, um, when I was self-publishing in the 90s, was every, every day or two, there would be comic books in my mailbox, whether it was uh, from the big three or sorry, big two at the time, or it was uh, independent uh, self-published books. And um, so that's why I try and back a lot of Kickstarters and Indiegogos. So um, so I can get that feeling back because when I was growing up as a teenager, you know. Um, and then you can go, if, if you do that, Edward, if you start uh, getting these single issues, start with uh, Indiegogo. Well, I think you already backed Graham Nolan's. So you're yes. gonna get that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. And then now you're gonna get, um, the right project i will send you a long box so you can start yeah. your long box <laughs> I've, I've also just backed uh glenn F um i gotta get his name right glenn fabry glenn fabry. Yeah. fabry i got it wrong uh yeah. and he, he's he's got a, a rather interesting one coming out um which is another indiegogo as well so it seems as though actually i think his is on kickstarter but it is it seems as though this, this is where comic book artists and writers are going now more and more yeah is that, is that right tom Sorry, I, and th that interview will be up on small screen this week. The Glenn <laughs> Fabry in interview. Yep. Uh, it, it, it seems to be the the major companies um, are, are you know focused on their their movie properties, um, uh, and 
the, the stories that, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I don't want to come, come across as too much of the old fart, which of course I am. <laughs> it, you know, the, uh, you know, I find a lot of the new comic books moving too slow. Hmm. Um, I think that uh, when I look around, you know, all of, uh, you know, all of media, if you go to a movie, any movie, within a minute, something big has happened. Yeah. Uh, if it's a romance, somebody's breaking up or somebody spots somebody. If, it, if it's an action adventure thing, there's some big explosion <laughs> within a few minutes. Um, you, you read a novel, that first paragraph, that doesn't grab you by the throat. <laughs> you're you're yeah. not going to the second paragraph. Um, and everything else is speeding, speeding, speeding up, except for comic books, which have slowed down. Now, you know, I, I am not the market for the current comic books. And I know they have a market, uh, or I believe they have a market. Um, but I find too many of the current comic books, they move too slowly for me to... For, for me to be interested in. Now, now, do you think do you think that's a byproduct of them writing it in hopes of getting it a Netflix series or an Amazon Prime series? So they're like tailoring it to because um, a lot of you hear a lot of stories now where like um, someone even before a book is announced, Amazon or Netflix will pick it up, you know. And do you think that they're tailoring it towards the, that medium in hopes of getting a, a TV deal or a movie deal? I hope not because, um, you know, it is uh, my belief and my dealings with places like Netflix that they, they want content. And, um, you know, they, they want interesting content. So you have to show in that first issue that you have interesting content. Yeah. Um, and and sometimes you you don't know to like the fourth or fifth issue whether or not the content is interesting. Hmm. Um, it, it, you know, I it, it's strange because I think sometimes with certain streaming shows, they they, they basically have uh, you know five ish, five episodes of material, but they stretch it out yeah. to, to ten episodes. I find that yeah. boring. Um, uh, I don't know if you guys have seen Dune. Um, oh, yes. <laughs> you, you, you three have seen Dune? Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Fantastic. I, well, I, <laughs> yes, I thought what I saw was fantastic. I just wish I had seen a whole movie. Thank you. Yep. Yes. Well, and the everybody. fact that I now have to wait a year or two to, to see, you know, a movie, you know, this was all set up. Where's the payoff? It mm. didn't pay off. Mm -hmm. Everything I saw was brilliant. It was beautifully acted, beautifully filmed. Everything was fabulous. We're just getting into the story when it ends. I, I, yeah. Like like I say, old fart. I, I admit it. Oh, no, 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 Tom, you're, you're I right. I want to see a beginning, middle, and end. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I saw that movie for free, and I still want my money back. <laughs> <laughs> I, I always said, I, I told both these two when I saw it, it was like, beautiful film, my kind of sci-fi, but I wish it was four hours long, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. If Yes, if it had given me the full story. Mm -hmm. But I, I, have a, I have a hunch we're going to see the next, you know, two hours, and we're still not going to see it, that it's going to take us 10 years before we see the, you know, a whole movie. And if that's the case, guys, I might not make it. <laughs> 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 I, I have always said that whatever you're selling, be it a, a single issue of a comic book, be it a novel, be it an episode of a television series, it should be a complete unit of, of entertainment, a beginning, middle, and end. You, you might have a, you might introduce a cliffhanger at the end, hmm. um, but in the course of that, there should be a complete unit of entertainment. Um, you know, I, uh, yeah. I, think we all agree. I think we all agree with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. 
I that's was why ke- Kev- real quick, Clint. Mm-hmm. That's why Kevin Feige is so, su- so successful with the MCU, Tom, is because he keeps mining uh, all, all the hard work you guys did over those decades, the beginning, middles, and ends. Yeah, and yeah. each of those, you, you can, except for, you know, Infinity Wars and, and, mm-hmm. and Endgame, you can watch any of those movies out of order, you know, spontaneously. You don't have to see the whole universe. Lunatics like us want to see the whole universe and want to see them in order and everything else like that. But, you know, I, I know, you know, very casual non-fans who've, who've seen like, you know, a friend of mine, the only movie she's seen is uh, Iron Man 2, and she loved it. Hmm. And, you know, and, and has said, yeah, I, I hear there were other Iron Man <laughs> I mean, I've, I've been meaning to see them that was actually a question i was about to ask you i was thinking about it earlier uh, and uh, i was i was watching a, a started a documentary uh about the uh, uh the fantastic four movie that never got released back back in the old days back in the <laughs> yeah, yeah and uh, and uh, but I, I started thinking and about how the effects were really now are totally primitive and you guys could tell the stories way better than they could in the movies. You know what I mean? With, with comics, it, you can you could tell a way better story. And they were they were kind of bound by the uh, the lack of special effects. Uh, but now we have crazy special effects. How do you feel about comic book movies in general, like uh, back then and now? And then, what's your favorite comic book movie? <laughs> well, you know the comic Sorry, book movies. Th- that is a big one. The comic book movies in the past. You know, they they were of their time. <laughs> you know, let's let's be generous. They were of their time. That Fantastic Four movie, I I actually had a little bit of a hand in. Um, and I you know, and I will tell you that the interesting thing about that was that uh, the budget for that film was uh, one million dollars. Um, and around that time. Uh, there was a TV show that I, 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 you know, was familiar with, let's say, um, and our, that budget was $3 million an episode for an hour of television with no special effects. <laughs> um, uh, and, and the reason why it was a $1 million budget was because it was cheaper to, to film, to film that, that, that movie, uh, and retain the rights than it would have been to renegotiate the rights. It was a, yeah. it was a, you know, it was a terrible thing they did to those actors. Yeah, yeah. Um, in terms of my favorite, you know, current superhero film, that's you know, so many of them are so good, and even the bad, you know, the the so-so ones in the Marvel universe are still pretty good. Yeah. Um, mm. And and you know I don't want to be a Marvel home jobber, but I really wish the DC movies were better. Yeah, <laughs> the majority of people do, man. The, I the mean, you know, people do. Listen, I I go go to those. Well, I don't I don't go to them anymore because I, I I felt ripped off too many times. But whenever I watch one of those things, I always you know watch it you know full of hope. And um, sometimes it's dashed right away. Uh, I, I still can't figure out what Batman versus Superman was about. Yeah. And, <laughs> uh, and, and you know, and like I say, it, it, it's a shame. And I, you know, I saw both versions of the Justice League, and I don't know which one was worse. Um, <laughs> And, and, and I and, and you know, I don't want to be I don't want to be that guy because I've worked for DC too. Yeah, I grew up on the DC characters. I do. I do think. I do think there is there is hope with the DC films, though, with the Batman movie. I think that that's the one that I look at that I'm like, okay, I think they're going to get this one right. And um, may, maybe it's, uh, maybe I'm one of these people that's just a sucker. I'm like, every time there's a new DC comics film, I'm like, maybe this one. Maybe this one. I mean, I did, I, I did personally quite like Zack Snyder's Justice League, but um, yeah, the majority, the majority of them, 
yeah, there's there there have been issues. Let's say yeah, and there I, have been issues. I think I think all the issues, at least for me, as far as the DC Comics movies are concerned, is story based. Mm. It's all it's always story based because the story just goes all over the place and it doesn't make much. They don't make much sense, and I think it's kind of style first, story second with with those DC films. I I, I would agree with you. I you know it all comes down to the script. If it's not in the script, forget about it. Yeah. And did you see Shazam? I saw Shazam. I thought Shazam was you know I thought Shazam was was as good as 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 a basic Marvel movie. Mm. Okay. Um, I think uh, it got a little out of hand at the end. Um, I also think that in the course of that film, they suddenly, you know, put in a horror scene, which had no basis. You know, there was no rational reason to put that horror scene in there. All it meant was I couldn't take my my young nep nephews and nieces to see that film. Wow. And that really annoyed me because up with. with with that exception, I would have been happy to take them to see that mil yeah. film. I think that's, that's well, to do with David F. Sandberg, isn't it? He's a, a horror director originally. Mm. And I think he just wanted to do something a bit, yeah, like... The, the, well, I think he wanted to show how serious the villain was, but he kind of just took it over the top. But I mean, yeah. like, like if you look at uh, Goonies and Gremlins, there's some pretty uh, um, big, big stuff in those kids' movies, too, like horror scenes, so... But I wanted, I'm not sure how much time you have, Tom, uh, but I want to ask you a few questions. Uh, we, I'm sure these guys have more questions too. And then uh, we'll take some questions from the chat. And I got a couple of questions uh, from private messages too from some people. But um, I, just, I was curious how, how you got started at Marvel and then and mo moved up to editor in chief. <laughs> um, and, and, and then the follow up would be what was it like to work, work there? Like work, work in that uh, bullpen. All right, um, I I got started at Archie Comics. Um, mm -hmm. I, I worked in their editorial staff. My my goal uh, was originally to uh, become a comic strip writer, and um, you know, I thought you know working at Archie would would help teach me you know how to write the humor stuff, and started writing for Archie and eventually started writing for Charlton and then for DC. And then at one point, uh, Jim Shooter said, why don't you do some stuff for us? So I started writing for Marvel. Um, at some I point- I was to work with Jim Shooter. No, I'm just joking. That's just a joke question. Go ahead. Jim, no, I, I'll answer. Jim Shooter, you know, um, Jim Shooter is one of the most creative guys I've ever run across. He, uh, he is probably the most brilliant plot doctor I've ever seen because hmm. I've seen guys come in with rambling stories and ramble on for like, you know, 20, 20 minutes, a, a half hour. And Shooter would turn to that person and say, listen, there's this one nugget that, that you've said that you can build a whole story around. And I'd, I'd always be, wow, I fell asleep 20 minutes ago. But but Jim, <laughs> Jim found the one nugget that works. He, he would then point out the nugget, and the person would usually go go and squander it. Um, uh, but but Jim, at, at a certain point, offered me a, a, a writing contract for Marvel, an exclusive writing contract. And... Um, and then at one point he said to me he was reorganizing the editorial department and he knew I had had ed editorial experience at Archie and he said, why don't, why don't you come on for like six months? And I remember telling him, Jim, I haven't had a, had a staff job in, in years, a full-time <laughs> staff job. E even at Archie Comics, my last bunch of years, I was only going in there two days a week and writing the rest of the, rest of the, the other five days a week. Um, and uh, he said, come on, it'll only be, you know, help me out for maybe six months. And I thought, yeah, I can do something for six months. And I, I joined the editorial staff. Um, and, and then uh, I, they gave me the Spider-Man titles, which I thought was nuts. You know, the new guy gets Spider-Man, give me a break. 
But Shooter <laughs> said, hey, it's just like Archie, except with superpowers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, I got my somehow got my books on time and, you know, started to get promoted up, you know, uh, up through the ranks and became Jim Shooter's second in command. Um, and I, you know, I don't want to get into the, you know, into the company politics and all the other nonsense. And but uh, there, there came a time where I was kind of, I, I could see the writing on the wall, and I was knew, knew that, you know, at some point Shooter would be um, asked to to leave. And I assumed cause I was his second in command, so I always assumed, you know, they they fired both of us. Hmm. Um, Jim so Shooter was pretty defiant. That's what I was making the joke about. So. Well, yes, defiant. One of the company names he had. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, Jim. I can say a, a brilliant guy. No, I don't. No, I don't know him personally. I'm just making bad jokes about his comic company name. That's all. Tom. Okay. That's all I'm doing. Well, you know, I'm better he, in a second draft as well. Uh, all right. <laughs> uh, he did have issues dealing with people. Let's mm. let's leave it at that. Yeah. Um, both the people above him and the people below him. And uh, at at some point when they, uh, I, you know, I I was told that I had to go out to lunch with uh, with the publisher. He came in and said, you, you, you have lunch plan, plans? I said, yes. He said, cancel them. We're going out for a very unpleasant lunch. <laughs> um, and uh, I, I, <laughs> he, he led me to this restaurant, and the president of the company was there, and I just assumed I was about to get fired. Um, but instead, they told me they were going to, they wanted me to be editor in chief. Hmm. And my reaction at the time was, uh, you guys are out of your minds. Um, and, and I said to him, listen, you have to understand, I'm a freelancer masquerading as a staff person. Mm. And, I've, I, and I always had that attitude that, you know, my, my staff job, even though it ran for about 20 years, was just a temporary blip. Um, <laughs> and, 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 you know, even all the time when I was a, you know, on staff, I was always freelancing because um, that was always my, my one true love. The other stuff was work, you know. Writing was, you know, kind of, kind of right, right. Writing was, I, I think, the reason why I was hanging around. Right. Anyway, uh, um, what what was it like to work in the bullpen? It was a blast. Yeah. I was surrounded by the the greatest team of guys, you know, Mark Grunwald, you know, Carl Potts, Bob Budiansky, Ralph Macchio, you know. Bobby Chase, uh, you know, the, the whole gang, you know, and, and the guys who worked in the bullpen and, and the artists and, the, you know, all the writers and that sort of stuff. Um, you know, I, I've, I've left off too many names, but I, I could sit here for the next hour or two and rattle off names. That you, it, it was just, it was just, a, you know, an incredible time. And uh, we all... You know, we were having a blast. We were, you know, we worked hard. You know, uh, back back in those days, back in those days, you know, we were working seven days a week. You know, ten to twelve hours a day. Mm. Um, you know, a lot of times they would send me out on trips, uh, which I always dreaded because uh, it meant I had to, you know, I had to bring a a uh, portable computer, which in those days weighed 35 pounds <laughs> and uh, have to work on the, on the plane, have to get up, you know, well, I, I used to have to get up every morning at five o'clock anyway to, to start my freelance. And, uh, you know, we'd go to a convention and uh, have to be at the convention all day long and then, and then go back to the hotel room and, Bust out the computer and, <laughs> and, and keep on those right. deadlines. Um, it, yeah, it, sure. You got to love it to do to put that much into it, you know. <laughs> Either that, or we were just crazy. And, you know, <laughs> I, I look back on it, and I think there was something seriously wrong with me uh, <laughs> to put in those kind of hours. Um, I, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, I finally discovered what this thing called weekends. And, 
are. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, you know, where they've been all my life. I love them. <laughs> yeah. I still don't know what weekends are, Tom. One, well, day, one day I'll find out. Yeah, in about 50 years. Probably. That's how long it took me. <laughs> well, I'll be 90 in 50 years, so I hope it's not that long. Well, <laughs> I, I wish you luck. And, you know, and speaking of 50 years, next year I will have been in the comic book business for 50 years. Oh. <laughs> okay, cute. There you go, Tom. <laughs> Congratulations. That's fantastic. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't think I was gonna. <laughs> I didn't think I was gonna make it, but I guess, you know. And so, next year will probably be my last year of going to conventions and stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> although, who knows? I, I, I'm going to two. I'm set up to go to two conventions this year, and we'll see how that works out. Okay. Mm. COVID is uh, has changed the world. Yeah. Yeah. And, and not, you know, none of us really know how that those changes are really going to affect us. But I'm really curious to find out. Yeah, well, I, I just went to London MCM Comic Con in London, and that 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 was pretty manageable. Like they they, they seem to do it pretty well. Um, I had a COVID test, and I'm COVID free, so that's quite nice. Even though I was surrounded by lots and lots of people, but yeah, yeah I think I think things will go back relatively quickly to some sort of normality especially well if that was anything to go by uh, were they people. were they wearing masks it was only uh, they're only wearing masks in the in some of the auditoriums so for some of the panels the big ones but everything else no no oh. but then again in, in the uk is a bit weird that way that the mask wearing um that not that many people seem to be wearing masks in the uk but uh, yeah, that 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 was pretty manageable, and I think I'm I'm going to go to Paris Comic Con, uh, probably not next month, maybe next year. I think they're starting it, and I think that'll be about the same. Yeah, so things will go back pretty normal, pretty quickly. It's a normal, pretty quickly. Yeah. I, I I was only invited to uh, well, I was invited to a couple of uh, international conventions this year, but I don't think <laughs> I don't think yeah. they, they would have allowed anybody from the U.S. to actually come. <laughs> but one of them, they told me they were going to put me in a in a uh, uh, plexiglass box with, <laughs> with, with with an opening, uh, so that people could slide comic books in, so that I could sign them. And Which then one I, was this? I, I don't want to. I don't want to say. <laughs> and I was going to wear masking gloves, and so it was everybody else. And I was thinking, you know, the fun part about going to a convention especially an international one, is you walk around the city after the convention. Yeah, you go to yeah. restaurants. You, you hang out with guys. Yeah. Um, yeah, that would have been a shame going around like in in, a, in your version of the Pope-mobile. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you guys uh, you, have any questions? Yeah. Well, I think we've got quite a few questions in the chat. Yeah. And maybe I, if you ask Clint. I read a I read a uh, the other day a story about uh, about talking about Marvel and how uh, and uh, it's fun to imagine you guys uh, working together in the office and it talked about the the place being a little bit disheveled because you guys are getting work done and then uh, some some guy starts commenting about about uh, and it was the president of of uh, New World uh, Pictures. And uh, and it, and the story I read said that you said, "Hey, who the hell are you? We're we're trying. To, I'm trying to finish my story here." And uh, is is that true? Is that real, or did somebody just f fabricate that story? It's it's actually very close to real. What had happened? What had happened was, um, I had, you know, I had a small little cubbyhole office, and my desk, uh, the the leg was broken, so we had a prop. I had propped up with books. And um, uh, this gentleman in a suit comes in and he sits down and I ha had this rubber couch. Um, it, it was a cheap couch, but it was great for stretching out and, and sleeping on. Um, and he's looking around the room and he's saying, you know, boy, this, this, this thing is barely, you know, is, is, um, is horribly decorated and look at your desk and there's no artwork on the walls. There's, there's, you know, this, this couch is, is disgraceful. And you know, the chair looks like it's about to fall apart. And I thought he was an interior decorator. 
<laughs> and, I, and I'm trying to proofread a comic book as he's talking. I said, listen, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm trying to get a book out. Who the hell are you? And he, and he said, um, my name is Bob Ramey. I'm the president of New World Pictures. And I thought, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, uh, and he said to me, you know, Tom, I, we, we have to redecorate your office. <laughs> <laughs> and I said to him, you know, I really don't have time for this now. And he said, well, I want to have a meeting with you. And, you know, and he took me in to talk to Jim Shooter and, and uh, and I, I and and I dealt with with Bob, you know, afterwards, and uh, very intelligent, very sharp guy. I, uh, you know, I'm surprised they didn't fire me when I said, "Who the hell are you?" <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I heard that story. I put a smile on my face because the idea of of not knowing, you know, you know, Marvel just got is owned by somebody, and the new boss is in there, and you say, "Who the hell are you?" That really cracked me up. So, <laughs> you know, I I've always, uh, I, you know, I, I'm I'm a political animal. I I really know how to uh, really deal with, uh, you know, the the higher ups. Um, when uh, Ron Perlman. Um, bought the company. He sent the, uh, his guy in. I'm, I'm trying to remember his name. Um, and, and he said to me, uh, so Tom, you're the editor-in-chief. What's your next move? Mm. He said, out the door. <laughs> <laughs> and he said to me, what are you talking about? Don't, don't you want to be publisher? And I said, absolutely not. I said, you know, publisher is it's an administrative position. All you do is you spend all day long looking at a you know, printing contracts and mm. and uh, writing contracts and that sort of stuff. I'm a creative guy. Uh, I'm at the top of, you know, top of where I can be at Marvel. So uh, when the time comes to move, I, I, I'm out the door. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and, and, you know, years later, at, at some point, they wanted to promote me into uh, a, a uh, a more admin, a total administrative position, and I, I reminded them, nope, I'm out the door. Um, but of course, technically, they fired me. Mm, <laughs> <right>. <laughs> me and my lawyers have always maintained technically they fired me. Anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah. Before getting these questions, I just wanted. I've always been fascinated. Um, what was the environment like? Uh, when the boys left and go and went and made image, um, that was you were there the last. You were there for what two years after they founded image? Yeah, like yeah, I, I, at least two years. Um, well, initially, you know, uh, initially, you know, a lot of people have a lot of different emotions because at Marvel, you're a member of the family. And when when the guys wanted to go off to Image and, and start their own company, um, you know, more power to them. Uh, a, a lot of us thought, hey, you know, we don't know if this is going to last because didn't know if anything was going to last. Um, but we tried to be supportive and stuff. Uh, depending on how they handled their publicity, um, <laughs> yeah. You know, part of that got to be annoying. I remember mm -hmm. one guy was saying, uh, you know, if you work for a company like Marvel, I, I hope you, you know, you, you like bologna sandwiches because that's all you'll be able to afford. And I'm thinking, wait a minute. You know, I know this guy got checks for 350000 bucks, and that was just one check. I know who exactly you're talking about. So if, he, if he's complaining that all he could eat was bologna, he must really like bologna because <laughs> he shoveled a lot of it. Um, and I, I, I also remember one time uh, a, a guy from Image, I, I don't want to mention his name, I don't want to embarrass him. We're at a convention and, um, and a couple of us are walking up and he's coming out with his wife and his child. And, um, you, know, we're, you know, a couple of my editors, we're, we're, we're greeting him and we're going at the baby and, you know, you know, making baby sounds are just, you know, just it's a, it's a very friendly a attitude. And then, a, and then a couple of panels open up, and the halls are suddenly filled with fans. And I look 
look at the guy and he has a look of terror on his face. Um, and he says, and I'll never work for, for Marvel again. And I looked at him and I said, and we'll never let you work for Marvel again. And then, nice. then, he, then he bows to me, thank you. <laughs> they went off their way, we went off our way. And it was, you know, hey, uh, you, you can't believe everything you read in the fan press because, you know, a lot of us right. are still friendly. Uh, you know, I see a lot of the, uh, you know, uh, let's say I, I ended up working for Image for, for a while. These are all my guys, and they're still my guys. Nice. Nice. Okay. Uh, so Danzig. All right. Wait. We have more up. Let's I skip some here. Yeah, here we go. Tom, you and Ron introduced the black suit Spider-Man and Amazing, Amazing Spider-Man. What was that like to be a part of comic book history? <laughs> You're amazing, truly. Uh, thank you for the for the nice words. We we Ron, friends, and I. Yes, we did two, issue two fifty two, which introduced it, but we were the filling guys. Um, uh, uh, Jr. Junior had taken a couple of months off um, to to get the X Men on time, so Ron Friends was kind of the filling penciler, and uh, Roger Stern had just left Amazing. And uh, Danny Fingeroth came in and said, Roger Stern's leaving Amazing. He wants to go, go write the Avengers. And I said, oh, boy, you're going to have trouble. Only an idiot would follow Roger Stern. Um, <laughs> and I proved it. Anyway, <laughs> uh, and, 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 you know, Danny said, no, I want you to write Sp Spider-Man. I thought, I, I, can't, I, I, I can't do that. I can't, you know, do, do the Peter Parker voice. And he said, sure you can. And I thought, yeah, I'll try it for a couple of issues, and, and then they'll kick me off the book. So I thought of myself as the film writer. So, yes, we, we, we help with history, but <laughs> we thought we were just temporary guys there. <laughs> I do um, know that, uh, you know, nobody thought the black suit was going to work. Nobody thought it. The fans had heard that we were changing – Spider-Man's costume, they sent in so much protest mail that the guy from the mailroom took a big sack of mail, dropped it on my desk, and said, I don't know what you did, but don't <laughs> ever do it again. <laughs> this blocked up my whole mailroom. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, I ended up doing, like, the plots for the, the Marvel team up that month, and... Uh, and helping out with uh, the spectacular Spider-Man because guys didn't want to be associated with this. Everybody thought they would be tainted forever if they uh, worked on the black suit. Um, <laughs> right. it, you know, and, and then the black suit came out and was a big success. Yeah, <laughs> and now they're, now they're bringing it into No Way Home as well by the looks of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And, but yeah, Ben, I hear Ben Riley's coming back. Yeah, uh, that was another question by Danzig here. Uh, in January, Ben Riley makes a return to comics as Spider-Man. How does it make you feel to see a renaissance for a character you're instrumental in creating? Uh, you know, I'm always happy to see the old guys come back. Mm. I think it'll, it'll be interesting. I, um, I, I know that Mark DeMattis is writing a, a, a limited series starring Ben Riley. And I think, you know, you know, Mark DeMattis is one of my favorite writers, so I'm, I'm sure he's going to do a fabulous job. I, uh, you know, I, I often laugh. People talk to me about the Clone Saga, and they say, oh, that was so terrible at the time or whatever. And I think, yeah. Um, yeah. Here it is, uh, what is it, almost 30 years later, and people are still talking about it. It did its job as a story. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it That's grabbed you by the heart. It made you care about the characters. It did its job. Yeah, and it was on the animated series too, right? Like I can see them tapping that, you know, for the MCU a little bits of the Ben Riley storyline, you know. Who knows what what's coming? <laughs> uh, Curtis Baker, he's uh, Clint's co-host, and uh, he's on the show here sometimes. He asked, "Did you create Thunderstrike for the Thorcore storyline, or did Thorcore, or did you do it for Thorcore to introduce Thunderstrike?" He has a complete run of Thunderstrike. Um, uh, 
we we created Eric Masterson uh, earlier on because we wanted the Thor to have a human identity, and we thought uh, you know a lot of times he's you know destroying buildings and stuff like that. So so it'd be cool if his secret identity was the guy who was helping build the buildings, <laughs> uh, and um, we when we introduced Eric we. Um, we always knew how his story was going to end and uh, put a lot of clues into it in the course of the uh, series. But we never intended to spin Eric off into its own, um, into his own uh, series. Hmm. Um, as we were coming towards what we thought was the end of Eric's storyline, um, somebody, you know, the sales department came in and said to us, uh, um, what are your plans for Eric after this storyline? And we, we told them how, how Eric's story ends. Um, <laughs> I'm still trying not to give spoilers. <laughs> and uh, and he said, no, you can't do that. You got to spin him off into his own book. Hmm. And that's mm. when we found out that, you know, that's when we created Thunderstrike. Um, so Thorcore came in much earlier than that. Uh, Thorco was actually a joke, you know, uh, as, as I, I, I don't know if you guys noticed, but occasionally during our run in Spider-Man and, and in Thor and in Spider-Girl, Ron and I uh, would, I don't know, poke fun at things. Uh, mm -hmm. No more Mr. Nice God. Uh, <laughs> here comes the Thorcore. <laughs> Silly things like that, We, you know. Goofy cover copy. And at one point, so one of the issues, we had a couple of different Thors with him. We put, here comes the Thor core. <laughs> and then somebody from the sales department said, when are you going to, when are you going to launch them? We said, launch who? This is the Thor core. <laughs> and I said, who's the Thor core? <laughs> and he said, you did it on the cover of this book. I said, that was a joke. Uh, but because it sold so well, we had to come up with a Thorcore limited series and <laughs> brought it back later on, and all, all sorts of chaos ensued. Some of my bad jokes have come back to haunt me, uh, such as uh, Peter Porker <laughs> Spider Ham. Uh, no, hey, no, that's that's a great one. That's a fantastic <laughs> one. Seriously, when I saw that in Spider Verse, I was like, oh my god, that's so cool. Mm. Uh, yeah, you think I, when you saw him in Into the Spider Verse. I, listen, uh, I I didn't know he was going to be in that movie till like a week before because some reporter called me up to ask me questions about, hmm. the, you know, the origins of Peter Parker, and I answered all the questions. And at the end, I said, "Why are you asking me about this?" And he said, um, "Have Have you heard of the movie uh, uh, Into the Spider Verse?" And I said, "Yeah, yeah, um, a." Uh, you know, it's a new animated film that Marvel's coming out with. They they actually invited me to the California premiere, but I, you know, I, I had a previous commitment, so I couldn't go. But uh, Marvel's going to have a showing next week, and I'm going to go to that. I said, well, Spider-Ham is in that movie. And I said, what? <laughs> <laughs> How the heck did they put Spider-Ham in the movie? Well, they put him in a great way. John Mulaney was fabulous. Yeah, um, he was. Yeah. He, he was just terrific. Um, for my money, Into the Spider-Verse is the best of all the Spider-Man movies, all it of is. the live action ones. I, I love that one the best. Yeah. And, and not just because of Spider-Man. <laughs> you know, it, it took a an incredibly complex concept um, and explained it so simply. Yeah. So that people who've never heard of alternate worlds, they accepted it right away. Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. I think the MCU could take a page out of that film's book, to be honest, because uh, with the multiverse coming, they're going to have to make it very simple for people yeah. to understand. Well, I think they 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 they, they saw the uh, roadmap, so I hope they follow it. And I, I have confidence. Listen. Uh, Kevin Foggy has done such an incredible job. You know, everybody working on the MCU has done a fabulous job. You know, I just wish they would use more of my characters. <laughs> well, I, I'd like the MCU to do a, a Silver Sable movie. 
Speak, sp speaking of it, yeah, the, the question I had was from Mikey Sutton of Gigasi. He says, how did you feel when Sony announced they were working on a Silver Sable live action project? You know, I thought, wow, I, I hope I, I hope you read her actual backstory and get it right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. There's one of the um, problem with the, the Sony, like um, Spider-Man or Spider-Verse movies, let's call them, is that they tend they tend to they don't they don't quite get it right, do they? I, don't know. I just watched the Venom Let There Be Carnage, and I I'm not a massive fan of Carnage as a character to begin with, but I was a bit like mm, it didn't quite work for me that character. He's a very popular character, but. Yeah, I haven't seen that yet. I I understand mm. they're using one of my characters yeah. called Shriek. Yes, and they and mm. they didn't do. I'm going to be honest; they didn't do a very good job with Shriek in that film. Yeah. It's a bit of a shame. Listen, you know, sometimes uh, sometimes movies are better than the original book, and sometimes yeah, you know. Um, but the good news is, you always have the original book. Yes. <laughs> That's so, true. That's true. What what character would you like to see on the big screen, uh, if it hasn't been up there already, oh, that you've probably. created? Uh, yeah, that's uh, you know, Silver Sable or or, uh, or Spider Girl or, or even Thunderstrike. Um, mm. You know, I, I don't know. I, I'm happy when any of them, <laughs> any of them make the make the screen. Do you know? Do you know any of that are being developed right now? No, you know I'm, I'm out of touch. They they they, they, they don't want they, they don't want me involved, and I and, and I don't blame them. Mm. <laughs> they uh, because uh, who was it that um, uh, someone was it Jim is Jim Starlin or the, he told a story at a con recently where Marvel came to him, uh, uh and offered him like ten thousand dollars for his characters. And then he's like, no, I don't want the money. I just create them for Marvel. Have you ever had that experience with Marvel Studios? Have they ever like come and say, hey, can you sign these forms or anything? If you don't want to discuss it, that's fine. I was just curious. I, I, um, listen, over the years, I've signed, you know, probably hundreds of, you know, and count my vouchers, thousands of, of forms for Marvel and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and, and you know, I'm always had uh, my dealings with Marvel have have a uh, you know. You know, I, I I can't say everyone has been great, but most of them have been. So mm -hmm. I, I, I have no problem. Uh, you know, I, I I understood the policies. I knew the deals I, I was making, and you know, I'm I'm good with everything. Everything is uh, I, everything has turned out pretty good for me. So I, I have no complaints. Excellent, excellent. We have a super chat here from Danzig. Uh, as a comic reader of 35 plus years, your story is added to a happy childhood that I look fondly back on. Just want to say thank you for all you have done. <laughs> thank you, sir. Um, I am. <laughs> I, 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 that's, you know, what makes it all worthwhile. Um, as a writer, there were a lot of times stories touched me and um, uh, I, I mean, as a reader, a lot of times stories touched Touch me, and as a writer, I wanted to do stories that, you know, would would touch my readers, and um, and I'm 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 happy to hear, you know, when I go to conventions, people tell me about, you know, stories that uh, they cared about, and uh, and that's very very gratifying. Excellent. Uh, Danzig also asks, you've worked on Archie, Hasbro properties, and Marvel, including the Clone Saga, Spider Girl. What would you say is your most memorable achievement? Hard to choose as you've had so many. <laughs> mm. Um, yeah, I, I have no idea. I don't. <laughs> yeah, okay, uh, guys, um, I've always been more focused on the next project than than the past projects, and I figure, you know, it's up to you guys to figure out, you know, what I did right, what I did wrong, and uh, you know. What works for you and what doesn't work for you, I, you know, that's a very good answer. I, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm the worst judge of my work. A lot of, a lot of times I look at it and all I, all I see are the mistakes. Yeah, <laughs> I hear that. 
I think James um, is very much like that. Oh, <laughs> yeah, to a T, to a T. Um, what do you What do you hope for a Silver Sable uh, film? Like, what are your hopes for it? Do you Do you think uh, that they'll mind? Do you hope they'll mind your storylines that you created with her? Like you said, I, the I, background, get her background I, right, or are yeah, you afraid I, they're gonna marvelize her like they're doing with the Eternals? Um. I hope they get the background right because I like the idea that you know um, this was, she took over an organization that used to hunt Nazi war criminals and since there weren't that many Nazis around at least at the time when we were doing the count, yeah. <laughs> at least then they had the uh, courtesy to hide in the shadows like they should should go back there I don't want to get into politics it just uh, it's too, too much but. Um, I thought, uh, you know, the idea of now working for corporations and, and being, you know, mercenary for hire, having an organization and uh, a group called the Wild Pack, and she was the toughest mm -hmm. one of them, of them all. I think you could do a, you know, a whole series of James Bond-like movies uh, around Silver Sable. Yeah, they could. Definitely. Yeah. And then throw in the supervillains and superheroes, mix yeah. it in there. Like yeah, if Sandman was part of the Wild Pack for a while there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you could just have a lot of fun with that, or make a great weekly television show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You would. So, excellent. Okay, uh, the right project on Indiegogo now, and they have they're in their you're in your stretch goals, right, Tom? Uh, yeah, we're in our stretch goals, um, and uh, you know I I think that. The campaign lasts for another uh, six or seven days. Um, so this is your <laughs> this is getting around your last chance to get get part of this and, and you know and see uh, all three Stooges together for, for maybe the last time. Um, you know, Ron and I will probably uh, you know keep on trucking, but uh, you know. Sal, like you know, he, he, you know the guy's barely eighty-five. I mean, come on, <laughs> a bunch of good years, a good year left. <laughs> That's a good attitude. Yeah, uh, but, hmm. but he wants to have weekends off now. I don't understand. <laughs> um, Curtis says, uh, thinking of that office now, could you imagine that what you were doing would be a billion-dollar industry? No. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. In, in, in the days when I was there, you know, I was desperately working with licensing and everybody else trying to get one of the other departments to, uh, to show some income. Because <laughs> uh, in those days, if the comic book end of the company failed, we might not be around the following year. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I always remember when we finally sold the X-Men cartoon show, I thought, oh, at last, it's not only on our backs. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, in those days, you know, we, 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 we were battling, you know, to convince studios, uh, you know, try to do a Spider-Man movie, try to do a Fantastic Four movie, try to do something like this. Mm. And... Uh, you know, it was a constant, constant battle. They were, they were practically giving the rights away. Yeah, you had the 1990 Captain America movie with the rubber ears. Oh, good. Oh, was that the worst part about that film? Is in the course <laughs> of that, when when he when he goes and first fights the Nazis, there's about two or three minutes of footage that shows that this could have been a good film. Mm. I mean, it really two or three good minutes of action footage that you say, man, that, that's where you should have built your film instead of all the other nonsense that I, I, you know, I shouldn't criticize. What, you know. well, it's, it's, it's a bad movie. It's a bad movie. It's, it's like you kind of, <laughs> all you have to do is see some clips of it and you'll know. Oh, gosh. You know, that and the, the early Punisher films and. Don't uh, uh, yeah. All right. Uh, so, what do you what do you think of the Marvel? No, uh, sorry, Spider Man No Way Home. You seen the trailer? The new one. I I I, I saw a trailer 
for it. But, uh, you know, I don't base uh, – the trailer looked intriguing, but who the heck knows what's coming. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. I think a, a more interesting question is what do you think of Tom Holland as Spider-Man? I think he does a really good job. Yeah. I think he does a, you know, a really good job. Um, but, you know, it, you know, Tobey Maguire did a good job. And, uh, oh, excuse my brain. The other guy Andrew that did. Gar Andrew, Garfield. Andrew Garfield. Andrew Garfield did. I mean, these, they all did, you know, decent, decent jobs. I mean, I, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm one of these guys. I'm in awe of actors. Hmm. Um, you know, uh, as a writer, you can work on a script and something like that. But once you put it into the hands of, of an actor, that's his story. That's, yeah. you know, you've lost control. That, you know, and, and man, what these people can do just always has me in awe. Um, you know. I've, always, I've always thought, like, especially watching the, the most recent ones, I thought Tom Holland was the one that got the balance right between... Peter Parker and Spider-Man. Um, I think like, there are elements of uh, Tom. Um, sorry, Tobey Maguire. I thought was quite a, a. Yeah, Tobey Maguire had a lot of good parts about him, but I thought he was a bit too much of a victim in his movies. And then Andrew Garfield was completely the opposite. Was like way too cool for school. And then Tom Holland for me kind of got the balance just right. It was a bit. You can tell he's that got that nerdy vibe about him, but also is you know when he's Spider-Man, he is. Spider-Man and does have that kind of that Spider-Man attitude and is cool and suave and stuff. Well, not suave, but you know, yeah. um, has 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 a bit of a, a swagger to him. And uh, I just thought I thought Andrew Garfield's one was too much. Like he was just just a bit too cool for school when he was Peter Parker. Well, that, that's you know that that's I think more of a function of the scripts than of the yeah. uh, of the actor. Yeah, I always blame the writer. <laughs> <laughs> have you done any movie scripts um i i, I prefer to t just talk about comics i you know i exist on many planes of reality and okay. uh, yeah. <laughs> you know and, and and prefer to just uh you know keep my other world separate okay Sweet. all right uh <laughs> when 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 you're writing tom uh do you do you when you're plotting actually do you start from the the end and work your way backwards or is it change all the time it, it yeah it, it all depends sometimes you 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 see the end it, it, you know in your mind sometimes you see the middle in your mind sometimes you see the beginning you know and, and you know sometimes you you know you just start writing and uh you, you get like uh, 20 pages into it and you realize oh wait a minute I, I finally know what this story is about. And you take the first 20 pages and you throw them out. <laughs> um, the, the difference between a professional and, and an amateur is I'm, I'm willing to throw out whole chunks, 50 pages of, uh, of prose, if I realize I've gone down the, the wrong rabbit hole. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, amateurs just, they love everything they, they do and they have to keep everything. Yeah, you know, um, most of the time, when, you know, if I if I plot a comic book story, uh, you know, twenty page comic book story, I usually plot it for about 32, 35 pages, and then go back and pull out and, and keep editing it down until I get mm -hmm. it down to the right size, so that the the story is being condensed and has mm -hmm. a lot of, you know. I, I want them to be meaty because, you know, because comic books are too expensive these days. <laughs> you know, well, that's good. You, you're very good at self-editing. Then, um, like you, you don't, you, you don't get too attached to certain lines and certain story arcs. You're like, if you think it's not serving the the perp, it's not serving its purpose, get rid of it. Get get rid of it. And uh, you know, I, I I haven't spoken enough about Ron Friends. Who is the other half of my brain? Mm. Um, Ron and I, um, when we work together, um, the, the two of us just throw out one idea after the other, and we we do it without, you know, without any emotion, without any ego, 
and um, and this is why I think we've been able to work together for 30, mm. 30 plus years because it, it's the story that matters. Yeah. His ego doesn't matter. My ego doesn't matter. We, we don't get, care whose idea, you know, who came up with what idea. A, a lot of times, you know, I, you know, I, I look back and, and think we, you know, we started at this place. We ended over here. I don't know how we got there, but it worked. <laughs> and That's a great relationship. It's a, it's priceless. I, I, I've played in bands uh, for my whole life and like finding people that, that there's no ego and you don't worry about who's, whose idea you run with. Uh, that's like a priceless thing. That's like a once in a lifetime uh, connection that you made right there. It, 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 it's fabulous. And then, and Ron, um, Ron, like I say, comes up with idea after idea. So, you know, a lot of times he, you know, comes up with an idea for dialogue. Most of the time I like his dialogue better than my dialogue. Um, the one annoying thing about Ron is every once in a while I'm working on a plot and I come up with this interesting visual sequence that I've never seen before. And I, I type it up in the plot and I give it to Ron and Ron looks at it and goes, wow, that's, that's terrific. But what if I did this instead? <laughs> this idea is always better than mine. Always better than mine. And I find that very annoying. And I think that at this stage of the relationship, he should, he should not annoy me so much. <laughs> because he's, he's just so freaking brilliant, I, I can't stand it. Hmm. Actually, it's the, well, honestly, it's the same. It, I have the same experience with James. I'll write a script for something, for a video or something. And James will be like, I'll look over it. And then you'll send, send it back. And I'm like, you've changed almost everything. <laughs> <laughs> and it's better and it's it annoying. is better <laughs> well because artists you know you know i can visualize things but artists live in the visual yeah you know ron's whole thing is visual storytelling um and and drawing i mean he's finally gotten to that stage in his life where he can sit down and have a meal without a pencil in his hand <laughs> because so many times when we were out eating, you know, he's eating with one hand and sketching with the other because oh he God. cannot stop. <laughs> oh, wow. That's amazing. Uh, are, th are there any series that you're reading? Do you still follow uh, some comic books and read some series? Any writers that you're fond of? Oh, uh, there, there are a lot of writers I'm fond of. You know, Mark DeMattis. Uh, you, know, um, you know, Roger Stern. You know, mm. <laughs> you know, I like Dan Slott. I think I like, you know, I like a lot of the guys. I, I, um, it, most of the time these days, when I when I read comics, I read older comics because, uh, like I say, the the modern way of decompressed storytelling doesn't really work for me. Mm. And uh, you know. And, and and that makes perfect sense because anybody, you know, publishing comic books for old farts like me, you're going to go out of business really quickly. Oh, well, no, I agree with you. There's a lot of uh, new comic, uh, current comics that I can't um, really, I, I get bored because I think for the same reason as you. But I would suggest uh, if you're not already reading Ed, Brud Ed Brubaker, um, he does a lot of uh, film noir crime fiction and uh, mm. Tom Taylor. Tom Taylor's writing the the new Superman, which is actually the son of Superboy or son of Superman. Uh, those two, they get right to the point, you know. Like everything's like so. I would definitely check those out uh, if you're okay. not already reading them. So uh, Ed Brubaker and Tom Taylor. But yeah. uh, so my question is, uh, did you have to get a new whip for Sal to make him work on this comic book, <laughs> or was the old one worn out? Or no, 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 no. What? You know, uh, uh, with our team, all we have, to, you know, usually just one of us has to start working on something, and then then the other guys, you know, jump in. Um, I, uh, I, you know, I, I started working for Archie Comics again, and that started because somebody asked Sal to ink a story, and Sal said he'd ink the story if Ron French penciled it. And then Ron called me up and said, call, call Archie and tell him you're going to write the story. <laughs> and I, I said, you know, it, it really doesn't work like that. Um, it's, 
come on, you know everybody there at Archie. Call them up and tell them you're going to write for them. And I'm going, oh, come on. <laughs> so I called up the editor, uh, Mike uh, um, Pulowski, and, and, uh, and I said, hey, Mike, uh, I hear the Ron friends are going to, and he goes, are you going to write it for us? <laughs> and I said, <laughs> Oh God, yeah, that's that's why I was calling. That got me back into into <laughs> writing Archie comics. I actually just recently did two two Archie stories, which will be coming out in their digest books. Uh, I guess in December and in February or something like that. Because mm. uh, um, you know, I'm a sap. You know, it, I always said there were three reasons for doing for for do, taking a job. Um, one is the money is, is is so good you can't refuse it. One is for love because you love the characters or love the people that are involved, and the other is the challenge. You look at it and go, "Gee, I never did that before." Can how do you do that? Mm -hmm. I have to take I have to take the assignment to find out. Um, and uh, I've I've gotten to that stage in my life where money is no longer an issue. I shouldn't say that, you know where publishers can hear me, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's now either the challenge or the love. Right. Um, and, um, and most of the time it's just the love. So did and, you end up writing in December? Will it be Archie versus predator three? Uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> I love Archie. I don't love predator, but uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not the guy they call for that stuff, <laughs> which okay. is, you know, interesting. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised they went in that direction. To be honest with you, uh, what do you have? You ever seen the new the the Archie series on the CW? Is the I, I, I saw a couple of the Riverdale. episodes. Yeah, yeah, I saw a couple of episodes in the beginning, and I thought, you know, the, you know, this is for a different different audience, a different age yeah. group. It's it's really not for me. So, yeah, yeah, I didn't I didn't even bother watching the first episode i grew up i i think as soon as i was born there was an archie comic right next to me uh that was my introduction to uh, comic books was archie comic books and um, now it's a golden rule in my house that you need archie comic books in your house no matter what and you've always have to have a couple of digests in the bathroom you know, it makes perfect it. sense to me yep <laughs> uh there was one i gotta look up this one artist archie i can never remember his name i want to ask you because I can never find information about him, and I'm very curious. But uh, Steve Kassan, uh, Steve Kassan for Big Wheel, uh, what were some comics that you read while growing up, Tom? I, I, I read everything, anything I could get my hands on. I started with newspaper comic strips, um, you know, The Phantom, Pogo, uh, On Stage by Leonard Starr, uh, Steve Canyon, Prince Valiant, any, any comic strip I could get. Uh, when I discovered comic books, again, I tr tried them all. You know, I, I loved Richie Rich and hot mm -hmm. stuff, and spooky, and uh, the, the superhero stuff. Um, you know, I, you know, you know, I just love the medium and, and still love the medium. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's just something special about comics to me. Yeah, you can definitely tell just from that cover alone. I'm really excited to read this. Well, I hope you enjoy it. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Cool. Well, one last question before you go. I'm going to let you right. go. S Sam Schwartz. Did you uh, work with him? <laughs> Sam Schwartz? <laughs> yes. I love his style. I love his clean line work um, and his angles. Yes. I'm pretty sure that's who I'm thinking Yeah, about. no, Sam Schwartz. Um, yeah, he, you know, he and I worked on Jughead <laughs> a lot. Um, he was a, he was a great guy. Um, he would, uh, uh constantly, uh, you know, change, change the stories and, and make them better. Hmm. Um, uh, one time, uh, he, you know, he, he, he tended to work at night. Um, and one time at about two o'clock in the morning, my phone rings and wakes me up. And, uh, I, uh, said, you know, who, who is this? And he goes, this is Sam. I don't like the joke on page three. <laughs> I decided to change it. And he said, what are you talking about? What page three? And he describes the story, and I'm thinking, 
I said, did I write that? And he goes, yeah. I'm going to change this around a little bit. I said, Ch Sam, you change everything around. Why are you calling me at 2 o'clock in the morning? <laughs> this is why I was lonely. And, <laughs> and, I, I, and I thought, this is, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to question whether or not this happens. So I took the phone, I put it on the floor. And I thought, if I wake up in the morning and the phone is on the floor, I know that Sam actually called me. <laughs> 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 and uh, and uh, we had words about that later on. <laughs> I said, told me, yeah, you want to call? Call before 11 o'clock at night, but yeah. no more 2 o'clock in the morning calls. <laughs> um, That's awesome. But he is, Sam, uh, my, my two favorite, well, you know, S Sam was one of my favorite Archie artists, and Harry Lucy, uh, mm. Juicy Lucy. You know, I loved Harry's stuff and, and George Freeze. I had so many great art, Archie artists. And, and I agree. And, and great Archie writers. I, I, uh, you know, I am in awe of, of, of what came before me. Um, and just happy that, uh, you know, I managed to do, do some stories that uh, didn't embarrass me too much. <laughs> well, Thank you so much for coming on the show tonight, Tom. We really appreciate it. Yeah. It's Thanks, Tom. Great. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you very Every much. Everyone, go back to Right Project now. Yeah. Uh, put the link again in the chat here. And it's, it's in the description as well, isn't it? It's in the description of, yep, yeah. for the replay crew that's watching. Yeah. Uh, make sure you go check it out, back it, watch the Indiegogo video. It's a great video and uh, <laughs> great interviews. Great interviews on the um in that video too. I liked it. All right. Yeah. I was so confused I didn't even know the title. <laughs> <laughs> well, we really appreciate it. and you're welcome to come back anytime you want, Tom. Uh, thank right. you so much for sharing your stories and uh and we're looking forward to the right project. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good night. All right. You Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Welcome what a to the small screen. Uh, what a nice guy, man. That guy was great. He was yeah, lovely. He's... Yes. Absolutely right. brilliant. He was absolutely brilliant. Yes. And now, <laughs> now I'm I'm probably gonna have to go as well because I need to get to bed. Cause... Call it Sanchez or you'll get a knuckle supper. Well, I was gonna tell you my whole life story. I've got two viewings tomorrow for flats. Yeah, oh. I know. He... Yeah, yeah it's a <laughs> fucking, fucking nightmare here in France. I, I'm I'm gonna clip out that compliment you gave me, Edward. That was like yeah, just, once in just, a million years. <laughs> just replay I that always, all the time. I always compliment you. You're such, oh, yeah. you, you make it sound like I don't. I don't. I'd never say oh, this is amazing. This is great. You stuff. never do. You all you do is berate me, and I end up crying myself to sleep at night every <laughs> night. Edward see, Lauder says, "Quote." <laughs> James is the syrup on my pancakes. <laughs> See, in, in a couple of years' time, it'll be us two, like or one of us going on some other YouTuber's like live stream, then talking about what was it like working with Edward Lauder or something. And you'd be like, you, that, that's, that'll be the point where you'll say something nice about me. <laughs> it's, it's like, and then <laughs> be like, you I know what? I say nice things about you in private, Edward. Okay. So. All right. But never to me. Okay. I get it. I get how it goes. Bullshit. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so you're getting new people to voice things and uh, you know new voiceover guys and stuff that are better than me it's just it's... once once you find your flat I'm, I'm sure you'll be available to and i didn't want to wake up clint because he had just gone to bed like two hours before what yeah. me yeah. up late <laughs> Kazakh says, ed why do you hate james so much <laughs> <laughs> everyone does but you bringing it to another level it's true i, it's I true. don't i don't hate james i, I tell everyone that i'm i i uh i am blessed to have met both of you uh otherwise it'd just be me talking hey, on my own like on, it was at the beginning on. say say that again and so I, I am blessed to have met both of you there you go you can clip that <laughs> is are you actually doing it as well you lie <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I see, a little what you, I, I see what you wanted to do. Yeah. All right. All right. Cool, 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 cool. 
Yeah, he was Tom DeFalco was pretty pretty darn cool. Oh Very man, cool. that was a lot of fun. That was a lot yeah. of fun. Yeah, yeah. it's like it's I'm kind put... of surreal to be honest with you. Mm. Um, and yeah, they, get him to ask him, too. get him to ask him uh, questions and ask him about Sam Schwartz, who I've always been curious about, and yeah. then uh, to make sure that I keep interrupting Clint as usual so he doesn't get a word in. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he might have just, was like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's just exactly how it happens. So he's still doing it now. <laughs> yeah. Thanks That's everybody. In the, thanks everybody in the chat for all the good questions too. That was oh, yeah. you guys that had some great really, questions. Really good. That was really, really good. Um, I think I think we might do I don't know if you're up for it, Clint, but I think James and I are talking about doing an extra stream on Sunday where we yeah. can go over some of the news. Yeah. Quite so possibly. The, what time are, are you talking about? We'll talk no. after the show because you don't want to. You, you don't have... want to air our business in public out here. We can we can have a public <laughs> meeting. Let's have a, okay. I'm just yeah. kidding. Uh, Why not? We're bitching about each other, anyways. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh. uh, am I coming back to the UK? Staying? I'm staying in France. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's annoying. <laughs> it, it's I like France. It's annoying though because things here are very difficult, and the French love their bureaucracy. Uh, which is very frustrating, but uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to be coming back to the UK anytime soon. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Dan. <laughs> we have a new video up today. Yes, we do. Yes, so everyone go watch the new video. It's an update yeah. on Tom Holland's Spider-Man contract negotiations. Uh, that was yeah. yeah uh, for those of you listening, uh, and Clint, I haven't told you this yet. It's a great voice yeah. on that on that video too. There is, yeah. It was and good. where where is where's Dan? Dan Plum, he he was in in the chat. I was going to bring him in, but I think cuz it's late for Edward. Anyways. Yes, so Edward messaged me this morning and he said, "Hey, my source at Marvel said this and this and this." And I'm like, "Great. That's awesome." I said, "We don't have I I'm thinking in my head, oh, there's no way we have time for this video. I've already backed up two videos right now. Plus the Halloween special coming up. So anyways, um, I'm like, well, you know what? Yeah, screw it. I'll write it. And, uh, and you were going to look at flats, Edward. Yeah. And then Clint just said, we've gone to bed. So Plum, I got him to do the test. So yeah, anyways. Uh, yeah, I didn't want to do it anyway. It's cool. We, we tag teamed. <laughs> we tag teamed that video and uh, we got up uh, pretty fast. Poor video. You know, so. <laughs> Poor video. I, I, I couldn't. I could not say that. I really like the sign off at the end of the video. Uh, I I don't remember. I think he says "see you soon" or something. Yeah, it was yeah. like it was really good. I was like, you need to sample that and put it at the end of it. It was like a really good tag uh, tagline at the at the end. Yeah, it was I like the same thing to uh, Trade, uh, trademark that right now. See you soon. I always try to end my videos with uh, something like "bye" or something oh. like that, and James just edits it out every single time. <laughs> Like, love you bye <laughs> I'll all just go absolutely just, brilliant that's <laughs> good the, the love you bye just seems so out of character for you for some reason I don't know why really so, mm. we might as well just talk about our meeting stuff that's what we're doing right now yeah, yeah I'm yeah, trying yeah. to like plug our new video and and now we're going way off topic here <laughs> and tomorrow we'll have another new video out and then Sunday we have our Halloween special which is uh includes the whole small screen team <clears throat> yes. Yes, which will be fun. Yes. 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 Um, yeah, and you want to maybe... talk about that? Go ahead. What? What? Want to talk about what? The Spider-Man No Way Home leaked trailer this morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. People, <laughs> people say, "Hey, guys, it's been leaked." Now, I, 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 the one I really liked was the guy on Twitter that said, "I'm seventy percent sure." The trailer's being released today. <laughs> I was like, what, oh where'd you God. get these numbers from? That was yesterday, right? One. That was yesterday when... I, I think that was yesterday, yeah, probably. When we, okay. we tweeted out um, uh, <laughs> when the other source gave us that info. We tweeted out instead of made a video. Yeah, and then like two hours later, said it'll be 70% up today. And, <laughs> and, then, every, oh. and then everyone <laughs> posted... The screenshots of the video of the trailer that Sony did end up posting, which was Don't Breathe 2. <laughs> and it's like, is this the trailer that they're uploading? Like, oh, man. I know because my friend dubs the Indian version of the trailer. That was it. That's what he said. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's like, well, yeah, your why, dub why artist the, is not going to know when it's going to get released. The, yeah, that's what I kept on thinking. I was like, why would a dub artist know when a trade is being released? It's ridiculous. Oh, well. Well, all I'll say is that there's a lot of um, misinformation with Spider Man No Way Home on Twitter, especially. Oh, man, the, the trending capabilities and the mm. SEO of that. Man, that's just. People are just going nuts waiting. Speaking, you know? speaking of like uh, real and not, is the uh, World War Hulk actually confirmed? Is that a, a real deal? Because I know it's been rumored for a while. Uh, it's not um, confirmed. It's not confirmed. It's not yet, confirmed. No. No. It was. It was what the geeks worldwide. I think that that posted that. But the the, the thing that was the um, thing that made me think that it's it's very close uh, to being a confirmation is that comicbook.com ran it. And they they don't tend to run things like that unless they also know something. Yes. Um, so I I I think it's or a version of that comic book is being the screen ran developed. ran it also like they yeah, they were talking about a whole bunch of Phase Five uh, stuff that uh, that they've been talking about and yeah. uh, and they included that and I was like wait is this real like like is this real is it real like yeah. I want to know. And if you... I think the other the, the other one was Th what, Thunderbolts, the Thunderbolts movie. Yes, uh, that, yeah, that was the other one that they that they talked yeah, about. Mikey you know. scooped that what? Ages last, ago, last cr no, last March. Yeah, yeah, it was a long yeah. time ago. That My Mikey's been talking about that for a while. The Thunderbolts being a a, a, mm -hmm. a project that Marvel's developing. Yeah. Gotta love the scoop game. Mikey scooped that I think on a Super Team Mega Force that I, that I, I, I was yeah. on when yes. I was on. Yeah. The Yep, that he was did. the first time I was on there. I was like, "This is cool. These guys are awesome." <laughs> that was that was a mayhem, and, and, that was a mayhem was, stream. Yeah. Like, it was like a Hollywood square, squares. <laughs> now it's just us talking about me going to look at <laughs> apartments. Now it's just squares. <laughs> it was Hollywood squares. Now it's just squares. Yeah. Just well, we now we we were talking to the editor, the former editor in chief of of Marvel Comics. That was, you that's, know, that's right. Pretty, pretty cool. Pretty, pretty damn cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, there, there, there they were. That was that was the good old days. <laughs> oh well, we should do another one of those sometime. I think. Okay. Right. Um, yeah. Sunday. Whatever time you're up, Clint. <laughs> so, oh, you you missed you missed. Is this going to be a daytime a daytime thing or a? a... Daytime thing, I think. But yeah, yeah, we'll figure it. We'll figure it. We'll out. figure out the time. Uh... You, you missed this last week when you're. Wow. Well, I do. It didn't work. Uh, uh, I, I do have up. some. Wow. But uh, but if if we can get see, it there's hurt... Dan Plum in the background. Oh yeah. <laughs> What's this? Cause he worked on the set of The Boys. Ah, oh, okay, and cool. That's a part where he popped up real quick and and. Uh... Wow. Oh, it's all ruined now, Edward. You ruined it. Uh, I don't know what happened. I, I, I'm still a bit confused. <laughs> <laughs> Flats just don't buy. Just buy boots, <laughs> <laughs> guys. Oh boy. Flats <laughs> is the English word for apartments. We don't say apartments in England. <laughs> you call them flats. I don't know why. I don't know why. Is flatbread a, a, a bread apartment you eat bread. in your apartment? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh. Flat flats are shoes you wear in your in your apartment. <laughs> you you wear flats in your flat. Yeah. Uh, Bobby said to talk about the Halloween special, and Bobby, I love you. I'll tell you in private message, but we can't announce it right now. It's not what you guys think it is, but you guys will all enjoy it. I can tell you that much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like what the, else uh, do, do do we have more Comic Con stuff coming out soon, James, or or not as well? Yeah, <laughs> he week. looks he looks stunned. <laughs> no, this week. Okay, I'm looking at stunned because of the image Clint just saw me. I was like, oh, I haven't seen that one in a while. <laughs> uh, yeah. Cool. Right. Well, I better I better head off to bed. Okay. Have a good night. <laughs> thanks that was, that was messed that, up that was brutal <laughs> mm. all right uh i'll see you guys maybe on sunday
I'll yeah, think about flat, it. Flat tires. Weird. If I don't get the I don't get the guys in the chat anymore. I, I think I'm too tired. They've turned against you. There you go, Edward. I sent you the same image. Now you'll see why he was shocked. What's this? What's this? Image? If it's an if it's a dick pic, I'll be very shocked. <laughs> Edward's like, please let it be a dick pic. That is so fucking weird. <laughs> <laughs> what What are you doing? Sending this to people? I don't know. I just saw it. It was funny. Man, I'm afraid if we put it. Cold. Yeah, I'm afraid if we put it on the on this. You get a stream, copyright or, strike. Or, or <laughs> yeah. like a, Content yeah, strike. We don't yeah, want yeah. another copyright strike. We'll just yeah, let's talk about that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll just man, I'll I just... hulked out. I got so angry. I was so upset. <laughs> so I yeah, we, we like... I, I sat and filmed the panel, the Loki panel, and um which I was asked if I could do, and they said yes. And then I uh, sent the footage to James and James edited it and put it up. It was uh it was doing very well. It was um, and then we got a copyright strike from M from Reed Pop, which is the company that runs MCM Comic Con. The thing is, they hadn't given me any any documentation or hadn't told me that I wasn't able to put I wasn't allowed to put the panel up. Yeah, it was that. It was that that reaction. It was a shame because a lot of people said, "Oh, why have it, why has it gone down? This is literally the only way we could see this." Now the problem is, is that it's actually also on Sofia Di Martino's channel. Now, Sophia Di Martino is the actor in Loki, so maybe she had some agreement. It's got to be in her contract, I think. Yeah, maybe. Um, you know, but then they said, yes, you could you could film the event, the panel, but you could only put two minute clips of it. And I was like, well, okay, fine, but you didn't tell us this. You didn't send us this in any email, or there's no, it's never been sent to us in writing. You're putting so, it very politely. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Instead of the email I, 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 yeah, I, I don't, I don't think it. I mean, the the thing is, it's very difficult to organize an event uh, in a pandemic. Very difficult, and I did get the impression that the, there was only three PR, uh, you know, um, women who seemed to be doing the whole press for the event, and they seemed a bit overworked. Uh, so you know, I don't blame them. I, I, what I do is I do blame Reed Pop because what they should have done is just messaged us privately and asked us or to just hit us with the yeah or a copyright claim in the meantime, and then you know, yeah. and then message us. To... Yeah. What? Well, anyway, we hold we... up. Wait a minute. Something ain't right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, James sorted it out in the end. He sent a, a very strongly worded email. And they, <laughs> like they long. yeah, they, but he originally with lots of things in caps, which I told him to, <laughs> to remove. So, so I just bolded them. <laughs> just yeah. bolded them instead. I was, I was like, <laughs> I go above and beyond to make sure that we adhere to YouTube's right rules and regulations or guidelines. We don't have a strike. We don't mm. deserve the strike. We, we kindly request that you remove the strike. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so the strike's gone, so the channel's okay, uh, but the, unfortunately the panel's also gone. But you can go and check it out on Sofia Di Martinez's channel. So the thing is, I think the reason they gave us the strike was because the video was doing better than the video on her channel. Which yeah. is a bit, bit and, weird since that video was literally a rip of the live stream. And my mm -hmm. video was me filming it from quite far away. <laughs> yeah. And because they want people... To go onto their metaverse website and pay hundred dollars a year to watch all the live panels on that, their comic cons. That, that is the. But then they just reason. gave it to Sofia Di Martino for free, and then hit us because you recorded it. Yeah, doesn't yeah. make sense. What I mean, we can legally do is chop it up in two minute segments, and upload it and make it a playlist, because they gave us permission to do two minutes of. Yeah, well, if you do that, then <laughs> lots a lot of time for you. To put up, no, no, I just throw it into Windows Movie Maker and then upload it. <laughs> That's all. It's just, all right. I think that it would be in bad taste, though. But it I would mean, be in bad if taste. we really wanted to, we yeah. could. That's how you get even. And and yeah, if definitely. you really want to see the panel, then we will do that for you. <laughs> you want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. Yeah, yeah literally, literally, read pop. You want to get nuts? We're gonna get nuts. <laughs> it's, it's like. Part twenty-two of fifty-seven. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> well, actually, yeah, you wouldn't do that. It'd be it'd be this, twenty, about twenty. 
Mark Zuckerberg own metaverse? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you watch that 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 video? Oh, I watched it the, was so the sneak cringe. Geek. Yeah, it was so cringe. The pre-rendered crap. As soon as I saw it, it messaged Kaz, I'm like, "Did you see this crap, man?" Yeah. Did you see? Kaz this? is like, "I love it." Kaz is just like, "I love it. I want to be in the the Facebook Meta. I want to work for them. I'm gonna buy stocks." Kaz did, is. Did you? I didn't know that Kaz was like a big Mark Zuckerberg fan. Like he's really? just such a fanboy of him. It's Mark Zuckerberg insane. has fans. I, I, I heard about the meta stuff, but did that did the Zucks release a a, a like cring, cringy video? Is that what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, so he, okay. he did. Yeah. He did a whole presentation that was live streamed on Facebook. It, embarrassingly, only twenty two thousand people uh, tuned in for the live stream, which for, for for a thing which is on Facebook is pretty bad because they can literally just channel everyone over to that video. Um, and yeah, it was it was really cringe. And Mark Zuckerberg is an alien. Like either he's an alien or he's a robot. Like he's one of one or the other. He's not a human being. He's got a little guy that. in inside him, like yeah. Ben in Black. <laughs> <Yeah>. Like, <laughs> but the fact that they changed the name to Meta and they're like, "This is what we want the world to be," and it's literally like Ready Player One. It's like, can you imagine a world in which you just put a head a, a visor on and you're in a like a paradise? Your favorite. You can look at your favorite view, like of all time. Every day you can work from home using the, the in the metaverse. I'm like, it's fucking crazy. This it's horrible. It's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. It's too. It's way too soon. And and the and their pitch for it, it's too stuff like that. All, never gets um, adopted by the mainstream when they try mm. and force it like that. It's got to evolve naturally, and then they have to capitalize on when it's at that peak. You know, like yeah. like Google did with the internet and search engines, and and uh, YouTube did with uh, streaming video. Uh, so I don't I don't think the the metaverse or whatever the hell is going to actually work. And you know what? There's VR chat on Steam, and that's yeah. exactly what that is. Um, and then there was like Second Life years, and then even PlayStation tried it with their uh, whatever their place. Home. Yeah, they you tried it PlayStation way back home. too. Yeah, I mean, again, yeah. VR headsets are just not good enough yet. As well, well, they said it was going to take 10, 10 plus years to to get get anywhere. Like, this is a work in progress. This is just yeah. So place. they're trying to capitalize, like they're trying to put their flag in, in the sand, like before anyone else gets. Probably. Maybe they knew someone was. I mean, plus, plus they've had a lot at, of bad press lately. A lot of uh, yeah. uh, whistleblowers <laughs> and all that. They're probably trying to like look over here and not over here. So. <laughs> Let's Man. rebrand. We'll get to get rid of that that other name and uh, and rebrand and and uh, we're gonna start fresh because we got to get over this bad uh, this bad press. Yeah, I just realized I look like Eclipso. <laughs> well, you got the light and the dark, the blue and the. It looked good. I liked it. But yeah, no, that I was watching it, just thinking Mark Zuckerberg is a terrible actor. Not a human being. Everyone in the video was a terrible actor. It's literally like, oh, hi, Mark. And I was like, oh, my God, they've actually referenced the room. <laughs> There's actually yeah. a room reference in it. Oh, hi, Mark. And uh, they play poker in VR in one point. And uh, it, uh, I was just like, this isn't going to catch on. I mean, someone in the, in the chat said you could give them credit for trying. But it's so clear what they want to do. They just want to, they literally want to own everybody, literally everybody. They want they want everyone to do everything in face in Facebook or in Meta in the metaverse, go to work literally in the metaverse. Like don't want they don't want people to live in the real world, which to me you know so. how they'll make their money is by compiling all the data of yeah. these people. So or just having say, Jonathan Dura, that's an amazing profile picture. Never change it. <laughs> yeah. I love that picture. Thanks yeah, for I joining the stream. I don't know if y'all. Uh, I was talking about it the other day. Uh, on my other show, I read an article about uh, they've got now holograms that you can touch that they're just figuring out where it blows air on you, but it feels real. And like they have it, they have one where you can like dribble, you can dribble a basketball and it feels like you're really dribbling a basketball and it's tricking your hand mm -hmm. by blowing air. Sooner or later, you'll be able to shake hands with somebody who like I'll be able to shake hands with Edward uh, and it, it'll feel like a real handshake. Um, 
And, and we then all, we once OnlyFans gets a hold of that, it's going to be it's going to be real <laughs> crazy. But this is what I was going to say. We all know what this metaverse thing is going to be used for, <laughs> don't we? It's literally there's going to be the most the, the disgusting orgies of all time in the metaverse. <laughs> it's going to be horrible. People need to be arrested that will be well, doing this. <laughs> it's all a matter of perspective. It's disgusting to you, but maybe not to some. Yeah, I know. I was joking. <laughs> I me too. Um, I, all I could think about that air thing was space balls. Or they yeah. like, they're canned air, like what a waste of air. We're gonna be a, a, a deplete a depletion of um, oxygen soon, and then they're gonna be using it for VR. Yeah, this this is this is the that the, the meta fans is my favorite. Like Kazakhs, that's a great name. I, I wanted to bring that up, but yes, James brought up Dan Plum. Hi, Dan. Haptic hologram porn. Right on that note, I really need to go. <laughs> You sticking around, Clint? Are we sticking around or are we calling a night? What time is it? Hmm. 7.36. Oh, it's early for you guys. Wow. Oh, yeah. I've actually... I've, think... I, I, when, when I open a new tab on my thing, I've got all your time zones now. I've got James, Clint, Freddie, Oh, you're Robert, genius. Yeah, so, uh, so yeah, 7.37. Yeah, well, you, uh, I can't do that. Poorly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wait, I haven't, I haven't made a time that. zone... I haven't made a time zone mistake in a long time. I almost well, did today. I was like, really wait, no, nope. got to put it my time. But yeah, so it's six thirty-seven for you, James. So yeah, you're, you're fine. You guys are. Yeah, fine. I've, I've okay. only been up for. Anyway, yeah. Ka Kazakh, Kazakh really wants me to leave. Yeah. When, <laughs> when, uh, one time I thought. I thought uh, James was on East Coast time, so I was constantly giving it to yeah. him, and and in, in his time, which was East Coast time, and then he's finally like, he's like, dude, and this is for months, you know, and then and he's like, dude, I'm on Mountain time, and I'm like, gee, I'm like trying to make it easier, and I'm I'm getting it farther away. It's pretty funny. <laughs> now the ground for five more minutes, Edward. Five more minutes. Five more minutes. Okay. Yeah. All right. So if you can I'm, officially if... you can officially meet Plum, and then then okay. you can go. <laughs> just a high and a buy. <laughs> yeah, Greenland. That's BS. Yeah, Kaz. Kaz is Mister Anon. He says he's from uh, Russia one day, then he's from Greenland, and then he's from Australia. Yeah, he does our three D logo stuff, uh, but we don't even know who he really is. <laughs> he is. He's probably I, put secret messages in them somewhere. I, I think he's Mark Zuckerberg. That's what. <laughs> Kaz is like anonymous. It's like a whole bunch of people all over the world. Nobody really knows who Kaz is. It's, so we're like talking to twelve different Kazes yes. at a time, yeah. or which yeah. one, whichever one is available. Hold well, on, guys, got to turn off my. Cool. <laughs> there you go. You met him. Bye. Hi. <laughs> I love how I love how James is drinking Canada Dry. You just really want to get Canada in there, don't you, James? Someone said that to me last stream too. <laughs> There you go. You know what I'm doing hey, later later tonight, uh, Edward? I'm gonna go Drink see Canada Dry. <laughs> no, I'm gonna go see uh, uh, Last Night in Soho. Ooh, yeah, I'm oh. gonna go see that tonight. Let, let me know what Lucky you think. Bastard. Yeah, I just looked down. I was like, it's showing. Cool. I'm gonna go see that. <laughs> Hi, Dan. How you doing? <laughs> how's it How's it going, Edward? I'm doing good. I'm, I'm good. This is the first time I've 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 actually met you ever on the live on a live stream. This is good. <laughs> Who's dinging? That's me. I forgot. You're on to live my... stream. I know. I for... I just for... I forgot. It's off now. How it's dare off. you? It's off. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a busy guy today. <laughs> yeah, I think. Well, James has made you very busy. Uh, well, yeah. The editing I love. So good. Well, it was. Yeah. It's very, very good. I'm very impressed with both of you, and also uh, you, Clint, as well for the voiceovers you've been doing. Thanks, man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I. I I feel I feel like um, <laughs> I I feel like J like James is like, do you want to do this? And I'm like, uh, I've got to go out, but I'm pretty sure you can find someone to do something for you. And then he's like, oh, I'll get I'll get Dan to do something. And then <laughs> then, then he he sends it to me. And I'm like, oh okay, I I might not as well be here anymore. So I'll just I'll just <laughs> leave it I'll, I'll leave it over to you guys, and uh, and uh, everything will be fine. Yeah. No, but I was really, really impressed. It was really good. And Thanks everyone so should much. go and check out that video because it's got a very good voice in it that's not me mm. or Clint. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the, I told, uh, told them the sign-off was really good. 
<laughs> see yeah. you soon. I don't know what, what was it exactly. Thank see you next was, time. See you next see you time. Next. Do yeah, it in character, man. Come on. Uh, we'll see you next time. They're perfect. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, I I should really, I really, really do need to go. I've said this so many times because I need to go to bed because it's almost three o'clock in the morning. Oh, um, shit. Yeah, and I've got to view, I've got to visit flats flats in the morning. That's going to be a thing flats. now, isn't it? Just get boots. Get boots exactly. <laughs> Where can right, people go. find you, Edward? Yeah, yeah I, I, you don't find me, I find you. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't worry about that. That's they're, they're, terrifying. They're, that is terrifying. I, I don't. I, I hate that picture. I hate that <laughs> you did that. Um, I don't like that meme. And um, James, yeah, um, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> All right, now, now, you now, love that picture. No, I, I I look too like I look like a kind of weird chipmunk. In no, that it's a toothpaste commercial, right? <laughs> That's that that look, does look like false know, teeth. Yeah, you know what I look like. I look a bit like how Tom uh, Tom Cruise looks like now. <laughs> in, that, in, in, that, in that picture, you look like I, old I look, Tom Cruise. <laughs> yeah, I look, I look like I've been drinking way too much. Uh, my face is just a bit too chubby. So yeah, I'm not I'm not I'm not a big fan of that. But uh, anyway, I'll I'll leave you guys. I'll leave you guys. Very nice to meet you, Dan. And nice uh, to meet you, too, Edward. Ha have fun, whatever you guys want to do in the rest of the stream. <laughs> just one, one, one second. There's oh, one God. guy that just five more minutes, Edward. Uh, five just, more minutes. Gonna, meet one more off. person. Literally, like five hours later. Just, just five <laughs> more minutes. Just five more minutes. Do you want to talk about cheeks? Where's this guy with his oh, cheeks? What, what are you doing? <laughs> what? James, where is this going? What? This, this it's going to be dead someone air. with like an ass this, as a face. Yeah. This is, this is us waiting for someone <laughs> to look something up. <laughs> what? Uh, yeah, all right. What are you going to do? What's he doing? Oh, what's he doing? All right, that's... that's you ever uh, see that guy? I've seen that's the gifts guy, of that guy. That's the guy in suits. Yeah, I've seen gifts Marvel. of that guy, and uh, he's got like, is it like cheek implants or something? I don't know, but his face <laughs> is humongous. <laughs> I've had <Yes>. enough. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Clint. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> oh dear, dear, oh dear. All right, <laughs> all right. On that note, on that note, I'm I'm off. I'm storming Have a good night, out. Man. Good luck with the flat hunting. We hope you uh you find some really flat flats. And, yeah. Uh... I, I... <laughs> Fuck that man. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Good right, stream. Man. Thank you. Yeah, Thank good... you. Have a good night, okay. Edward. Thanks. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, enough about our balls. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. How many? How many we got in the chat now? Did we lose? Did we lose everybody? Having, no, having... we got every, everyone's started talking more now. All right. Mm -hmm. We got we got spooky in here. Hey, spooky! Now, now that Edward's gone, <laughs> now the party started. <laughs> Where is the cocaineum? Yeah. Why is it so down low? What the heck? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait, I put it up. Yeah. yeah. Cocaine. <laughs> this is like when, when dad goes to bed, we just goof around on this. <laughs> <sighs> Bobby said hi to you, Plum. Hi, Bobby. How's it going? I remember um, <clears throat> I used to play Animal Crossing a lot on the Wii. Yeah. When when we had the studio on King Street, yeah, that's how I met Bobby. Oh, we used shit. to play Animal Crossing mm -hmm. together. Yeah. I never played Animal Crossing. I never. I, I didn't get into the the whole craze of it. Oh, well, I really liked the Animal Crossing City Folk. I tried the the one for the Wii U or the latest one. I don't know. I for tried another one. I just didn't see see the same. Yeah, Switch. I think just didn't feel the same. Maybe it was because I had to play online. And uh, EJ, 
Uh, you've seen the meme that Clint sent me, uh, but I'll send it to you anyways. So. <laughs> All right, there's the chat. Right. Yeah. So. So. You're going to see Last Night in Soho tonight, eh? I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure. I'm not pretty a, sure. Pretty it's sure. Edgar Wright, you have to go see it. Yeah, it's I law. just. Yep. <laughs> It's the law. Yeah, I think I'm think I'm probably gonna go see that. There's uh my mic's doing weird stuff. There. <laughs> Slap that mic. So that's that's how you do it. Show his boss. I also kind of want to see the last duel before it's out of the theater. Mm. But you know have you seen the trailer? Then you know everything that happens in it. <laughs> you don't need to see it. Uh. So is, it, is that like Duel, the Spielberg movie? <laughs> well, kind of. It's like it's in medieval times, but there's also trucks <gasps> no, I... that, that <laughs> follow them. What? Yeah. <laughs> I, wanted to, I wanted to ask uh, Tom about what he thought of Howard the Duck. I was curious about mm. Oh. Well, Just, speaking me, of great... Me. There we go. Uh, speaking of great um, Marvel films... <laughs> Hey, Howard the Duck was awesome. I saw it in the theater. Oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not old enough for that. <laughs> I didn't see it in the theater, I think, because I wasn't interested. Or maybe I did see it in the theater. Maybe I blacked it out. I don't yep. know. Cinema Twin. Same same uh, theater I saw Empire Strikes Back in. Oh, nice. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Arr, I'm old. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Danzig. I that is a, a dope shirt. Yeah. I got a, a Fantastic Four Scotty Young one the other day. Um, <laughs> oh, you are aging yourself. <laughs> extra large though, so I didn't wear it. It's it's what we do, spooky. We can't all be millennials like you. Apologies. <laughs> That's an in-joke. Kaz in called house. me the ancient one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. What were you gonna t- what were we gonna talk about before we had the guest on tonight? We had a list, didn't we? Oh yeah. Um let's see here. Oh, okay. Oh, so here's here's a good one. Um Edward reported today. That uh, Billy Crudup is is Zack Snyder wants Billy Crudup for Rebel Moon, and I, everyone on Twitter is going nuts about it. Yeah, he like everyone up. on Twitter is going nuts about it. It's like uh, it's got more traction than anything we've ever. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> Where is it? I was like, who's Billy Crudup again? There he is. Yeah. Oh yeah. What about Naomi Watts? Is she going to be in it too? Probably. That's his partner. Yeah. Oh shit! Right. Wow. What can I say? (laughs) (laughs) Oh man. Wow. What else? What other news we got? Um, what else was there? Uh, so Edward's message was, yeah, mainly Spider-Man No Way Home, maybe some Comic-Con stuff, and also Hayden Christian playing Anakin in Ahsoka. Yep, I read about that. That, that'll that probably be uh, flashbacks or something, I'm sure. Yeah. Because he's not the tallest guy. They're going to have to be Darth Vader. You know, they might do it, but like... Uh, I think it's cool they're giving him work. You know what I mean? Like here, <laughs> be in these shows. Be in the. Uh, be, he's going to be in the Obi Wan show also, and then be in this too. I think it's super cool. But like, yeah, no! he's Canadian, eh? <laughs> yeah. Um, but you get him in some flashbacks of him and Ahsoka interacting. That would be really cool. Be Are we going to get to see him slaughter all the young youngins? <laughs> the younglings, yeah, <laughs> yeah. They actually gonna show that this time. Ugh. I mean, speaking of horror in a children's movie, yeah, that was pretty dark. Yeah, I still wanted to see the Tuscan Raider scene. 
He goes back and yeah. an annihilates the Tuscan Raiders. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted more pod racers. <laughs> oh. Oh, man. Oh. <laughs> now you know. What a, okay. Cool. What else we got? I don't know. Uh, people in the chat. Not, not yeah, yeah. Yeah. Revise the list. Guys in the chat, what do you guys want to talk about? People in the chat, request your memes. Yeah. Anybody have any any interesting news? You know what, Danzig? I'm going to send you the StreamYard link. Yeah, send him. Yeah, anyone else want it? Let me know. Danzig, 1979. No pod racing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want? I was a kid when it came out. <laughs> Let's see what. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's see. We're not talking about that. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Where's There's there? a funny story I I read the other day where Disney announced a, a uh, they're gonna do a Marvel Disney cruise, which is pretty funny. Oh yeah, you you guys are talking about that on your show, right? Yeah, yeah. it's really pretty funny. So what? A bunch of characters in in costume? No, actual actors. Okay. Actual <laughs> like. Like Paul Rudd and uh, Evangeline Lilly, and I'm like, I know she lives in Hawaii. Is she just hitching a ride to Hawaii? Uh, yeah, oh, I'll, I'll do your cruise. I'll just <laughs> yikes for X amount of dollars. <laughs> I don't know. It just it seemed really. I read it on the on our show, and it was really funny. I was looking through my. Uh, I have a. I have a. I have a method. A method. A habit. Habit is wrong too. The way I do things is I send myself interesting articles. Uh, I text you have them a to system. myself. I have a system. That's the word I was. I'm gonna system. let me text myself that word real quick. Um, and uh, <laughs> yeah, and I can and uh, I'm like, oh yeah, we need to talk about that, and then I can find it because it's in my texts, and I'm the only one that texts myself. So yeah. Hmm. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We where the hey, hell Rajneesh is Rajneesh? Is here? What's up, Rajneesh? Where's Raj? I got some. Oh, I thought now. he was gonna pop in a video. Yeah. <laughs> hey Raj, you wanna you wanna come on the stream? We're just messing around now. Now I haven't watched Army of Thieves yet. I'm gonna watch it tonight. <laughs> I'm going to pretend that's a meme request. Jedi Master EJ. Oh, wait, I don't have them. Asked if I ask myself questions and then answer them. Sometimes I tell myself jokes. Sometimes I've heard them. Sometimes I haven't. Yeah. Beep, beep. Yes. I think my joke fell flat. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> that happens to me all the time so dan what have you been up to man uh lately just a lot of editing um i'm also trying to get my hands on an e-bike finally uh just because I'm, I'm sick and tired of the uh, uh public transit in toronto yeah e-bike what's an e-bike electronic oh. bike yeah 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 battery like, powered gotcha like a little scooter yeah <laughs> cool man yeah so i could be a real old guy you should get one of those one wheels. Oh, please. Hell no. <laughs> Dude, they balance themselves. It's it's science. Oh, it's it's not about like the uh the, the physics of it. It's just <laughs> I find people look so ridiculous on them. <laughs> yeah, that's why they're awesome. Wait, although, unicycle? Although I have I have to appreciate <laughs> that they make people look like Darkwing Duck. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Uh, although I've yet to see someone ride around in a Darkwing Duck costume. No, but that would be awesome. <laughs> That'd be dope. <laughs> Come on, Halloween. 
<laughs> yeah, unicycle is even better, James. I like that. Tell us a story on on set, Dan. Something that happened. The boys, October faction, whatever. Yeah, we put uh, we put hmm. your picture up again. Were so, you in the background? Hmm. Well, I didn't get to see much for the boys because I, I was basically just uh, sitting outside of um... the window there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, the uh, the donut shop. Uh, right. I, got, I did find I did get to see the um, uh, uh, that like huge shooting sequence that they did, uh, but that was near the end of production and everyone was kind of wiped. <laughs> Like no one, no one was really hanging out or anything near the uh, near the craft truck, so there was a it was uh, very low energy by by then. Uh, but I think the most exciting thing that that ever happened to me on set has to be um, on suits, actually. Believe it or not, <laughs> hmm. uh, there was an explosion in a nearby construction zone, and uh, like a wood panel just. Flew right out of like a thirtieth floor, the uh, thirtieth story uh, uh, window, and just came careening down into one of the uh, into one of the locations truck that I was actually sitting in like five minutes prior. Oh, oh man! Yeah, yeah, and uh, no one else caught it, so I was actually the the guy who yelled like duck and cover, fucking run! <laughs> 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 uh. That's hilarious. And the debris fell everywhere. It was crazy. That is that's crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, but other than that, locations is uh, you know kind of on the boring side of production. You know, you might as well be in in pre production at that point. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Yeah. Uh, we got a request like... here. There's a uh, Bobby's grandson oh, of Spider Man. No, Aww. No. About time I put that up. Apologies for being so late, Bobby. That's cute. And it's good because it blocks plum too. <laughs> <laughs> no one wants to see my mug. <laughs> What's awesome. up, Raj? Hey. Hey guys. So Hello, Raj. Raj, what's up, man? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, doing absolutely. Good. I'm, doing good. I'm uh, glad to find yeah, uh, glad to talk to you guys finally. I'm a big fan of the show, big fan of what you guys do. Um, I'm a little nervous, um, but yeah, excited to finally get to talk to you guys. So, yeah, cool. Don't um, be nervous, man. We're we're know, we're, uh, we're at a loss for uh, subjects to talk about, and nobody asks more questions than you do, man. So it's great. It's <laughs> really good to have you. Cool. Thanks, man. Um, That's a compliment. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, you yeah, I know. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I have a big mouth, so I mean, I guess that serves me pretty well. Uh, hey, man, I'm I'm yeah, a big fan yeah, of your um, work, to be honest. I'm not, I'm not, I'm just... Here, uh, do we lose um, him? Oh, for some of you guys that don't know, I'm a independent filmmaker from the UK, and that's kind of what I do when I'm not fanboy, being a fanboy, and that. So yeah, yeah, uh, check just, that. Just watching on your thieves, Quick. so. Click that link in the in the comments. I just that's his uh, that's Rajneesh's uh, demo, his show reel for cool. 2020. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, I'm thanks, a big man. Fan I of your work, that. Yeah. Raj. What What well, do you how, very much? Yeah. That's how I met him. Eh? I met him on Twitter because. Uh, um, what am I hearing? I think, Are you guys I don't hearing know. I think that? There might be some it, oh, you know it... what? That's your demo reel playing in the background. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I met him on Twitter, and it's, you, you don't meet a lot of uh, independent uh, filmmakers on Twitter that are actually humble. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we, we, me and Raj had a good talk at the start, and then, uh, then he just never talked to me again. I guess he got to know me and then just decided he hated me like everyone else. So. Oh, Raj, what have you been working on lately? You know that's not true. Just skirt past um, my bad joke. Well, and go ahead. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, mate. It's it's impossible to hate you, man. Like, you know what? I know you've got a couple of Americans there that don't get your sense of humor, but your humor is very British. So I think a lot of the Brits really appreciate your dry sense of humor. So 
don't have because I'm Canadian. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it. Yeah, yeah. We do. Well, that's it. You're just as miserable as we are, aren't you? So that's why. <laughs> so, I'm uh, like, yeah, we're, yeah. So go ahead, Red. Yeah. But, um, so, um, yeah, what I've been working on recently. Oh, um, yeah. So, so uh, oh, this is an interesting story. So, ever since the pandemic began, uh, March last year, obviously we were all locked down, like we can go anywhere. So, you know what? I, I was sitting in the house, I was bored, and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to carry on doing what I'm doing. And I was just making movies. So, you know, I managed to do that for a bit. I made about 15 short films uh, during my time. Oh, sick. From about. Oh, yeah, so that was from about March until about July. But the problem was, is that as I was making it, I could, you know, you can get away with doing quite a lot of stuff by yourself and you can learn quite a lot. I mean, do the whole Robert Rodriguez thing of being your own cast and crew. Hell yeah. Yeah. But the problem, I, yeah, so, but the problem I was facing was actors. I missed working with actors. I love working with actors and quite frankly, you know, as a director, you need to work with actors and actors are very important to any film. They're always the focal yeah. point of any movie that you make. So I made this idea. Um, I pretty much thought, you know what? I know some act- I know some actors, I know some great actors. Contact them on Facebook, set up a Facebook group. You know, contacted them. I was like, hey guys, you know what? I've got this great idea. Uh, lockdown monologue series. Going to create uh, some monologues that you can read. Get a great performance from your voiceover. Attach it into a film. I'll make it the film from my end. Obviously, we can't meet in person, but you know we'll have a great time. At least we'll get something done, right? This is during lockdown. I send that message, and I'm thinking, you know what? Maybe four or five people say yes. The very next day, I wake up. I go on to Facebook. Twenty-five people. They said, "Yeah, we'd love to do it." And I was like, oh, ah. "That's awesome." Yeah, but that was like five people I had to work with. I was like, "Shit." So. But, 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 you know, a few mm-hmm. people dropped out. But, um, but yeah, like, yeah, so it took me quite a while. So I chose some poems. I chose some stuff from Shakespeare. You know, I chose some stuff that was public domain. You know, that if I was to make it, I wouldn't get in trouble because it belonged to someone else. Right. So, uh, yeah, it took me a while. Yeah, so, yeah, so it um, took me a while. I uh, broke them down, figured out the backstory, you know, put my own interpretation, you know, really analysed it, got the actors in. Got some good performances, voiceover performances, and yeah, that took yeah. So that took a while. So from that, um, I have made about eleven films that have been completed. So at the moment, I've got about four short films for next month, and about two or three for next year, and then that's it. It'll be Amazing. it'll be done. And good news is I can actually yeah, I can uh, get them in front of the camera. So. That's so yeah, great. I've uh, got a lot that I've been doing. Yeah, thanks, man. Um, well, you know, it's funny because I'm part of this uh, filmmaking community group, group called uh, Nexus. Big shout out to Nexus. They they're in Nottingham and East Midlands. They do amazing stuff. Great speakers and everything. Going to be real powerhouses in the film industry as well. So that's a free plug-in for those guys. Um, but yeah, they ended up giving me the nickname uh, Three Thousand Films Raj. I'm pretty, I'm pretty <laughs> sure they were being uh, insulting, but you know what? It's okay. It's fine. That's fine. <laughs> but but yeah, um, I've got I've just got big plans. I've got stuff that I want to do. The mental breakdown will come eventually. I will burn out, but at the moment, until it's all finished, I'm I'm just going to keep going until the wheels fall off. Essentially. Yeah. So, dude, yeah, I love that's my uh, long-winded stories. I love the energy, dude. You're like you're you're all about yeah. getting it done, and and. Uh, that's great, dude. That's really cool. Man, thank really you very cool. much, man. Like, you know what? I'm just so hyped that I'm talking to Greg Smiley. You know, like, that's my nickname. For you. <laughs> I know that prob- you probably hate it, but it's just like... Thank you, thank you. Yeah. This is Guy yeah, Smiley. Yeah, that's, that's my nickname. Guy Smiley and yeah. Avril Lavigne. Yeah, well, you know what? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yesterday, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, not oh, that was quite bad because well, I had work the next day and that was like two o'clock in the morning, so <laughs> I, I really shouldn't have stayed for that show, but um, obviously, there's some difference. But now, nah, man, like, yeah, I'd always, uh, yeah, if I if I got a nickname for you, that means it's in a term of endearment for me more than anything. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I know some people might not appreciate it, but like, yeah, I've got I had one uh, for Sil, um, 
on Seal Show. I call him Duke Ellington's ghost. He look because he looks like him from yeah. Big Mouth. I think. Have you guys yeah. watched? Yeah, it's just I don't, I don't know. I think at some point he might end, end up. Uh, well, he doesn't know where I live, so he can't do anything. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but could yeah, be a no, good thing. I, I'm sure he's just happy to see you there. Yeah, but, probably. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. Yeah, man. Um, so yeah, I, I'm, yeah, yeah. So yeah, apologies for being late, though. So what did I miss on the show today? We had uh, what you guys Tom DeFalco, for, former Marvel and and a more former editor in chief of Marvel. Yeah, that was a great that was a great interview. He was really fun. cool interview. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's insane. Yeah, that you go so back cool. and watch it, man. The guy's really well, you, cool, you know and he I, was. I, What's what's that? Yeah. Oh, sorry. No, I was just going to say, like, I mean, it's so cool in terms of what small screen and what you're doing, and it's amazing. And you know, it, it's crazy because like, I'm not really a comic book fan, really. Like, um, I mean, I watched this. You know, I watched the cartoons as a kid. Okay. A Talk to bit. you later, man. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not. Good. Right, is our friendship over? Is that it? Just, I'm, I'm, I'm just sure. Yeah, it's just the mafia. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, but it's oh, okay. that gr- the green screen thing you were talking no, about. No, uh, no, was... That that's something that Edward and I were talking about a few months ago. So, um, if we do one like that, you want to be involved? What's the green screen thing you're talking about? Um, yeah. Well, yeah. I'm pretty sure I mentioned it to you at one point, Clint. Is we I was gonna write a, a short film, and then have Edward act on his green screen, and you, and then me. Oh, yeah. and I guess Plum now too. Um, Raj, if you want to be involved, that'd be a lot of fun. It'd be. I think it's gonna be like some crazy sci-fi thing with some like some crazy weapon props and everything. It won't <laughs> be until like 2021 though, because like so busy until the end of the year. It is 2021. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, 2022. Dude, I am tired, man. No. Yeah, that sounds cool. Raj? Yeah, man. So, uh, Raj, did you yeah, do... No, no, were, that's, that sounds amazing. Were you, were you a filmmaker for yes, a, a yes, long for time before, before the pandemic, or did you start during the pandemic? Uh, you, you know, that's a good question. Um I mean, uh, story time with Raj. Um, yeah, so um, I mean, the way <laughs> oh, I started. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> so uh, yeah, get strapped in. Um, so yeah, like I wasn't, started, I wasn't um, doing YouTube before. No, no, and then I used the time no, of well, the, um, did, the downtime yeah, well, you know to sitting I mean, at was... home to get to do, and now I'm doing this YouTube all the time. So I thought it was really cool that you're like used your time instead of just sitting there on lockdown. You're like, let's make some freaking movies and do something. You know, I thought that was really neat. So I'm not. There's a little bit of a lag, so I'm not going to cut you off again. So cool. let's, yeah. No, it's all good, man. It's all good. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously, I used the time during lockdown to just hone up on my skills, but. Yeah, but yeah. Before then, I was yeah, I was a filmmaker. But um, I mean, the way I started, I, I did three years of uni. Then after I graduated, doing film and TV production, I realised I learned absolutely nothing, and everything I learned was t- was useless. So um, I spent. <laughs> so yeah, that that's kind of the way it goes. I mean, for anyone yeah. who wants to be a filmmaker, don't bother with film school. Like seriously, you, yeah. you get people who don't know what they're doing. I mean, just, all they want to do is take your money. You can learn a lot just by yourself or with great people anyway. But yeah, yeah. graduated from uni t- for about two, three years. I was a runner. I guess you call that a PA in America. So yeah. I was getting people coffee and tea and, you know, uh, just learning as much as I could on set. And, you know, often I was traveling up and down the country just to get work. And a lot of times I'd, it'd be for free. I'd just do it just for the experience. So it eventually paid off. I got a traineeship. Um, I actually worked on a show called Coronation Street. Um, that probably oh, doesn't no way. probably means something. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, no, definitely. And you know what? Those guys are cool as well. Like they, they don't act like stars. They're just absolutely amazing people. Uh, to them, very. You know, it's a job, and they're down to earth, and it's a big family. But what, while I was there, and while I was doing my traineeship, a uh, director they just pulled me aside and he said, "Well." Raj, what do you actually want to do in this industry? Like, what, what is it you're looking to do? 
and I looked at him and I said, well, well, I want to do your job. I want to be a director. I want to tell stories. I want to work with actors. Like, I want to, you know, I want to, you know, share my voice out with the world, you know, uh, just what you're doing. And he, he looks at me, he goes, Raj, you can't do this. Then. You can't be a PA because you'll never be a director that way. Go out and yeah. stop making your own movie. And that was in 2015. He told me that. And I literally started months after. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's been about five, nearly six years being a filmmaker. And it's been great. I've uh, not looked, it, obviously, there's always ups and downs, but yeah, um, not looked back since and I've been carrying on. And, you know, it's, it's a shame. You know what? I know at Los Angeles is huge, but you know what? It's, it's a shame we didn't run into each other, Clint, because a couple of years ago before the pandemic, I actually had a film that was shown at a film festival in Los Angeles. And oh, wow. I don't know exactly where you live, but yeah, so, um, which was cool. It's cool as shit. Um, it was also my, it was also my 30th birthday. So I went crazy. And um, mm -hmm. I know, I know, I know a lot of Americans, I know you guys think you can drink, but like when I, when I was there, <laughs> yeah. um, they, they were trying to hand me leaflets. They thought I had a problem. So yeah. Uh, it was like, no, 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 I'm not an alcoholic. I'm just British. Fine. Sorry. American beer is, is water. You know, that is funny. Yeah, it's like I mean, nearly every... I'm from Texas, dude. Pretty, I'm... Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so, Raj, yeah. I don't know. Uh, what, what, uh, what, Plum, what? Last, last week, was it we were talking about not needing film school? Uh, yeah. I, yeah. I basically and, have and the then, exact same opinion as Raj. Yeah, same. Yeah, we. If you missed last week's stream, we talked about that, Raj. We, we had the same... Um, same experiences as you uh, going to film school here in Canada, and uh, and then uh, when we had Vince Rodriguez on the on the show a couple weeks ago, uh, we talked about the same thing. You know, go out and do it. You know, you don't really need to go to school. Yeah. And Coronation Street is big in Canada too, buddy. Yeah, it's it, it was my my mom's favorite show for like a million years running. Yeah, you know how I many sleepovers? I'd be up to like four or five in the morning doing stop animation at a friend's house, and I'd wake up on the couch and just hear Coronation Street and then they're <laughs> watching it on Sunday mornings. Yeah. yeah. On the old CBC. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah. EJ, it works on yeah, your yeah, phone. Yeah, I mean, um, I don't, yeah, on, honestly. Yeah, I mean, I mean uh, on, honestly, I think, I think film school, like, I mean, it's, if you can get something out of it, great. But honestly, I think there's just, and it, you know what, it might be different. Like, I mean, UCLA and NYU might be different, but it's just, I don't know. Like, there's so much in terms of information that you're just not getting, and it's it's ridiculous. It, it short changes a lot of bright-eyed, bushy-tailed people that just want to be just in there. You know what I mean? Yeah. One of the most important things you don't learn at film school, which I think, if you want to be a director, essentially. Working with actors, you know, and you, they, most film schools don't teach that, and it's ridiculous because it's not it's not the same. Like, I mean, if a shot's not working, I can say, well, you know, it's a little too wide. You know, let's switch the thirty-five mil lens to a fifty. You know, tighten it up a little bit, or you know, like, or you can say, oh, you know, um, you know, oh, um, you know, the light's a little bit too harsh. Let's soften it up can't do that with an actor you can't just say be angry be sad cry <laughs> cry right now i mean that just doesn't work so i don't know it's yeah i mean <laughs> i'm not 100 percent against it i think there are a couple of good film schools you could go to but yeah i think for the most part i think just grab a camera just start making start learning and start just start working with people and that's it you know well like, you yeah, don't have to spend like hundreds of thousands of dollars on this so yeah. Getting around people that are like minded and trying to do the same thing too is is like is mm -hmm. is super important. You know what I mean? You sit there by yourself, uh, you don't get much done. But if you got other people, you're motivating each other, you're bouncing ideas, and and yeah. uh, you know, there's accountability, all of that good stuff. So that's that's awesome. I I agree with you, man. It's the same with like a recording being a recording engineer you don't need to go to recording school for that like that we live in an era now where it's like we have the entire history of of human information on our phones you know what i mean in our hand so you can look up anything 
Like it, mm-hmm. it's like you could you can learn and uh, and you learn more from experience uh, of trying and failing. I think so. I think it's a good advice. I think that director that told you to 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 quit being a a, a runner and go out and, and start making films. That's like the greatest advice yeah, anybody was... could have ever done. That's really cool that he cared enough to say that. You know what I mean? Like yeah. yeah. That's cool. Well, that's it. I mean, well, 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 well that's it. I mean, you know what? I mean, what's be, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm no, I'm not going to get in trouble. I'm not, well, I'm not, I'm not working in broadcast TV. But no, when I was working there, the only guy that was a dick was the third AD, which is like a step oh, up from being a, a <laughs> one. I mean, that was, yeah, yeah, that's and that, kind of the I mean, third sorry, AD's job, though. Just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, but, no, but he no, it wasn't even just about the job. He just purposely went out of his way just to be a dick. You know, he's no. just, yeah. But I, like, you understand the job. Like, like, if, yeah, like an AD, like, they need to keep on time. Like, they need to, need you to go, right, stop fucking around. Like, we've got to get this done before 12 or whatever time it is. But now nah, that guy, he was just, no, nah, he just went out of his way just to be an arsehole. But no, nah, everyone else is pretty <laughs> cool. Um, um, yeah, that, I th- yeah, I think on one of these shows I did kind of let the cat out of the bag that, you know, a lot of people that work in TV uh, just notorious cokeheads, which is, um, <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't even think that, that's slander to say, but no, it's just, it's insane, like, yeah, so, <laughs> I mean, I guess you kind of have to be on the shit, like, if you're working 12, 15 hour days, but, yeah, it's, it's, it's a real life. <laughs> so, um, yeah. yeah, no, I, I learned a lot. Say, um, so go ahead, Rash. No, go on. Go. Sorry. Yeah, you go. You want to no, say something. No, I was just going to say, Clint. Um, I, you know what? I'll just say this one thing quickly, and then, then I'll just shut my mouth. Um, no, I just wanted to say to you, Clint, like, I've got no. a lot of respect for you. Like, just, no. no? No? Okay. <laughs> what? No, um, I, so, no yeah, you're not no, going to shut I, your mouth. It's no, you delay. just said you had a lot of respect oh, for me. Right, keep, okay, talk, yeah. keep talking. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, like, like sound engineering. Yes, no, sa- honestly, sound engineering. Like, I, I do, like, the recent movie that I've been working on, I was trying to get the sound design. Like, I, I was up like for hours, literally, literally like 13 hours working on the. Like, I don't know if I'm allowed to swear, but working on the bloody thing. And then, like, like three days, I just couldn't get the sound right. And it's just tearing my hair out. And I'm at a point where I'm getting the sound design to try and fix it for me. I don't know how you guys have the patience for it because I just everything like I just completely lost my shit. I'm like, fuck this. Like I'm noise reduction and then it gets all tinny with the sound and then I'm trying to like lower it and you can barely hear anything. It's just like F this, man. Like I just you know what? I mean you guys are like superheroes to me. So that's it. That's all I want <laughs> yeah, to say. That's <laughs> audio's been the bane of my existence too. Like ever since I started editing. Yeah, sound is tough. It takes a long time to figure out, and 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 all of a sudden, certain frequencies it just clicks. It's like you repeat the failures so many times that one time you accidentally do it right, and you're like, "Oh, those are the muddy frequencies," or "Oh, that's what that's what that is." You know what I mean? Like it, it you just figure it out after a lot of t- time, and and also uh, a lot of things like compression and things like that it's super easy to overdo it and just completely ruin a whole thing. And you don't know if your EQ is bad or if the effects are, or, or the plugin is, is ruining everything. But it, all you know is it sounds like crap. And, and uh, what I always tell people is just dial it back. You probably did twice as much as you needed and turn it, whatever you just did, uh, turn it back about 50%. That's, that's a, uh, cause, yeah. cause, uh, usually with mixing and things like that it's like like you're you're adjusting things until you could perceive a a a difference and you're like yeah that's what i'm going for but the but the differences are supposed to be super subtle Uh, you're not supposed to hear something it's supposed to sound normal you're not supposed to hear a changed effect it's supposed to sound normal so it's like Mm. it's hard to judge that but anyway it's like you're not supposed to see the edits yeah exactly exactly that was like the one good piece of advice i got out of film school (laughs) (laughs) like don't make a christmas tree (laughs) right yeah um i was gonna say raj i'm not sure if i sent if i told you this in our initial conversation but uh i learned more from robert rodriguez's book rebel without a crew than i did film school yeah 
Yeah. That's a great I don't know book. if you've yeah. ever read that yeah. that book. Uh, but uh, like Spooky says, follow Robert oh. Rodriguez's tutorial about doing oh. film like James showed me. And uh, Plum edited a social video yesterday, the Scream one, <laughs> yeah. uh, for small screen. <laughs> and he put and he put in a Robert Rodriguez fact just for me. Yeah. So it was a lot of fun. And if I ever come to Austin, <laughs> when I come to Austin, Clint, yeah, we're going to go camp out at Troublemaker Studios. We'll just go to Robert's house. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I almost did that in my early twenties, right? <laughs> Grab a sleeping bag and go camp out his his front door, like Fight Club styles. I'll you call can him. Do that? I'll call him. <laughs> That's an option. Let me text him. Number. Let me text him real quick. See if he wants to jump on the stream. <laughs> 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 you For do a that second, I was like, "Oh my god, is he serious?" <laughs> I'll call, I'll call Jim Carrey, the other Canadian I know, and then we'll, we'll get them together. <laughs> yeah, because we all know each other, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. What's up, EJ? What's up, guys? What's How's up? Doing? Good man. How you doing? What are you Where's up to? Up? Doing some Jedi stuff? Uh, <laughs> some Trek, Jedi, Batman. Superman, all of it. Yeah, <laughs> it's Friday night. He's having a good time. Yeah, he's got a buzz on. Man, yeah. speaking of which, <clears throat> speaking of which, let me go get some chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> the good kind. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's good hearing you, Jedi. I, um, what's that? Yeah, because like, we're all talking in the chat, aren't we? So yeah, it's good to finally hear your voice. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. Hello there. Hello. Uh, yeah, I was just saying it's good to hear your voice. Uh, Jedi, it's, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're all cool in the chat, aren't we? So uh, oh, we got to pull yeah. it down with Picard. It's good. Oh man, that's so, great. Like, Dan Zager, the Picard Chris maneuver. Yeah. And um, my communicator pen's not coming off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's glorious, dude. <laughs> the crossover the we all wanted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just look. need to go get my robe. Put it on too. <laughs> Jedi robe. <laughs> yeah. The one from the pick. Wow. Oh, I got so many costumes. Yeah, I've I've only got yeah, the one costume. Yeah, yeah can, can you can you imagine if the clown table actually did that? Yeah, the... losing your rush. <laughs> hey, it's a screaming lady. Let's look at that place. Don't have my glasses on. No, that's Cliff. That's Clint. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. He's saying, I like this. Whatever it is, <laughs> I like it. I wonder why they never crossed uh, crossed over Batman and Star Trek. Oh, Raj, we lost Raj. We got some comics, I think. Well, the Green Lantern comics with Star Trek with the new Trek. But yeah, but... Really. <laughs> no, nah, but we need Batman. We need Batman yeah. in, that, in that series. <laughs> Uh, basically telling Picard what's up. <laughs> EJ is hilarious, man. <laughs> Subscribe to small screen. Subscribe to small screen now. Do it. If you don't do it, I'll be me in the space. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, stupid. Raj is back. Hello, Raj. You can't turn your neck in these things. Well, that was the <laughs> suggestion from Michael Keaton, right? Yeah, definitely. Oh, no. Yeah, Chris, yeah, make sure you no, turn your neck. Christian Bale got it. He finally got That's it. That's it. Hello, Raj. Yeah, I don't know if the internet connection is going a lot, but yeah. 
I mean, I'm having a sneaking suspicion that you might have just kicked me out on purpose, but who knows? No, nope. I can never prove it. So, <laughs> <laughs> I did not. I promise you. But yeah, Kaz says we found you an actor for your Batman fan film. <laughs> I'm right here. <laughs> Send the bat signal if you need me. <laughs> I'll be there. I'll use science. <laughs> <laughs> what an elaborate costume for basically a Dick Tracy character. <laughs> <laughs> Calling Dick Tracy. Calling Dick Tracy. Oh man. Oh man. I feel honored that I'm in the top row. I don't know how we got the, these, these kind of squares, but I kind of like them. That's weird. That's weird, okay. Oh, I, I got to okay. kind of fix the focus on this camera, though. God damn Use it. Use the, uh, the logic camera. I must have had to drop anchor or something. You have to you have to open it up before you get streamer, though. It's not going to work. Oh, yeah. Of course. <laughs> of course, there's something I can't do. I never got into camera work anyway. Oh man! Now you look like I a expected. captain. <laughs> oh, there we go. That is that is not the face I expected. <laughs> it never is. I went to put on my Kevin Feige costume. <laughs> What's next, Kevin? World War Hulk. There we oh, go. that would be, be cool. sweet. Yeah, what do you what I miss? What are you guys talking about? Uh, basically, just how Batman. I'm starring in a new Batman fan film. You missed cool. It. <laughs> really? Yeah. Not really. Raj's Batman fan film. <laughs> 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 nice. Oh wow. <laughs> I am Doomcock. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, there you go. Hang on. Let me show you guys what the 3D printer will do. I'll be right back. It's just a flesh <laughs> wound. Dude, that is awesome. <laughs> All right. I obviously need another cup of coffee. I'll be right back. It's all you, Clint. It's all me. What's up, guys? We're back. It's Bye small screen. Clint. There we go. Get my, get my hat off. Oh, so what? So what did I miss? Uh, we got. To, uh, let's look at the chat real quick. I am dying. L M A O. Ah. Yeah, some good ones. Only fans. <laughs> Subscribe to Dan Plum Only Fan. All right. <laughs> what is that about? I don't know, but I'm I'm going there now. <laughs> Cause I've got five bucks. Yeah. <laughs> Captain EJ Kirk. So what are you guys uh doing on a uh, on a Friday night? Just getting crazy on, on the internet? That's it? Uh, I was just editing more, um, uh, more of the socials and stuff. Cool. You 3D all... printed that? That's cool. Yeah. Oh my god. It's all different. Well uh, Holy crap! Different types of plastic. And then, of course, I don't know if it'll get banned. But here's Hans Blaster. I haven't finished it yet. Mm -hmm. Let's see that again. Wow, that's awesome. Holy shit! It's all 3D printed. I've got some phasers and. I've got cool. some batteries too. But I'll send you. I'll send you my address. Well, here we go. I'm a <laughs> drunk guy. Yeah, that's pretty cool, yeah, man. You, I have to send uh, send James some stuff. I know he would like a battering for sure. Oh yeah, and uh, a communicator pen would be amazing. Oh yeah, those are pretty easy to print. This one, of course, is you know, it's got a little fourteen k in it. Little shine. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Love this little costume. I actually want a next gen costume. Me too. Well, okay. that's technically a, ne a next gen costume. 
Yeah, I don't want the series. From generations where they all didn't get the memo that they changed uniforms. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, which one uniform are you wearing today? I don't know. I wear the Voyager style. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Deep Space Nine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, they're they're temperamental to get the printers working, right? Because it has to be the right temperature oh, yeah. in the room, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's got to be right temperature, and you've got to have that board flat. If you don't, it'll screw the whole print up. Uh, I've actually, there's like a, a long needle. It's about that long. It comes with it, and you have to stick in the bottom of it so the filament will still come through it. Right. It's, it's It can be aggravating, but like the, the first time I printed... Uh, this saver this part here the filament was real thin and it was real spongy uh -huh. it was weird i could i could like press it almost all the way down oh weird! Really? Really? no i mean now it's like you know it's hard plastic now but when i first printed it it was crap so it takes a little getting used to and then you know some trial and error of course that's pretty cool though but you can make some cool stuff <clears throat> oh, you could course. do Probably some badass toys like like uh, action figures and stuff too, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's some cool statues you can make. Like mm -hmm. some, I've, of course, wanted to print some Superman stuff. Uh, <laughs> definitely. But you know, my printer's not real tall. It's you know one of the cheaper ones, of course. So some of the prints I've tried to print, it'll stop halfway through, and it's like, ah, crap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so it's got to, it's got to start from like. Yeah, you gotta up. scale it down. Yeah, you gotta oh scale it down sometimes. So, like so then it, you just have to like put some red paint and like, oh yeah, the top of Batman got chopped off and he's it's his dead <laughs> lower half. <laughs> or, or you can split the model up. You can split the model up and print it in different sections. That's the way I do it now. But the first couple yeah. times I was like, oh crap, <laughs> it's not working. <laughs> That's cool. I've I've wanted to get one of those for a while too. Oh no. Yeah. It's it's so cool. There's so much stuff you can do with it. I saw this guy at a what's it at a store, and uh, I was complaining about my my mask. This was during like it, it, it hurting my ears, and the guy was like, "Oh, hold on!" And he just reached into his backpack, and he's like, "Here, have this." And it was a piece of plastic that had these hooks, mm -hmm. and it it was bendable, and you put it behind your ears, and then it it holds the mask straps so that they don't pull on tug on your ears. And I go, "Dude, like I can't take this from you." And it was like, "Here, let me give you a couple bucks." And he's like, "Man, I've got like twenty of them. I three D print them all the time. I've been giving them to all my friends." I was like, "Wow, that's cool. Wow. I need a three D printer. That's cool." Cool. Yeah, James, you should definitely get one for sure. I, we've been I thinking about it, but that's like, uh, yes, that's, that's a lot of time and aggravation. You know what I mean? Yeah, that I'm you don't not have sure. a lot of time. You so, lot yeah. Of time. What's up, uh, Krypton's no. core? How's it going? Krypton. Yeah, I got I got this for my birthday uh, last year, and I that's got awesome. the. Uh, the actual, let me show you here. Since we're doing show and tell right now. Sweet. Spooky got me these. Oh, cool. Holy oh, shit. Cool. My birthday this year. Yep. Yeah. I've got um, more kunai back there. Um, sitting over there with everything else. And uh, you'll, you'll like this, EJ. Kevin Conroy's signature. Oh, yes. Wow. Uh, yeah. The voice of Batman on this one. Mm -hmm. I'm using my phone, so I have to go. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I look like I'm a real big comic book manga nerd, eh? Oh, for sure. Mm -hmm. I used to have one, but then I stopped getting laid. <laughs> <laughs> Not me, baby. <laughs> Out of here. <laughs> how how can Kaz, how can you not like this art style, honestly? I don't know. Maybe you just don't know how to draw. <laughs> James is weeb. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I I'm always love that show though. I'm just gonna leave that up. Oh man, I can't sta stand the, the dubbed voice actor for Naruto. He's so oh, annoying. no. And they, they added that believe it shit that I just cannot <laughs> abide by. Oh, my God. I, why do they decide that? 
It's disturbing to me. And we, insult we... to the art. Damn. <laughs> Obviously, I have some uh, strong opinions about <laughs> Naruto English dub. <laughs> Subtitles all the way. Oh, of course. And why would you want to get rid of that like amazing voice work? I like dubbed on on uh, show, <laughs> on shows, not uh, not cartoons, but sh on shows. I will. I will do I mean, the you can't avoid it. Naruto run for you, Kaz. One day. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just sticking up for the uh, for the the uh, the dubbed uh, fans, you know. Oh well. Sticking up for the three, three, dog. The three people. Yeah, all three of us. <laughs> I think. Um, oh shit! What was it called in English? Uh, the the last. Uh, the last movie I watched dub was Haute Tension. I, I I forget what what it what it is and uh, say that again, Plum. Haute Tension. That's it's very pretentious of you. See you later. <laughs> uh, you lost your top row. I like Emily. Uh, no, I've got the top row. <laughs> what is it called? Uh, English title. Was that French? Yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> Amelie was a good French movie. Mm -hmm. I like that. Oh, movie. Is it? Is it fantastic high movie? No, it's not. That's not it. <laughs> high tension is a way different movie. <laughs> I think it's. I think it's to translates directly into a Jurassic Park. <laughs> High tension is a Mel Brooks film. Yeah, yeah, it's it's definitely not uh it's definitely not that. So is Raj still here or is trying his MacBook now? I don't know. Raj, are you still there, man? Raj, we need you. I don't know. Tonight on Unsolved Mysteries. <laughs> oh man, I was really disappointed in the uh, the remake of that show. Oh yeah, I mean, well, you can't beat Robert Stack. <laughs> no, you definitely can't. And they didn't do BTK. Come on. I mean, I guess it is solved. <laughs> Takes me off the top row. I thought you said MGK. I was like Machine Gun Kelly or MCK. Although, man, I am the lead. I think uh, I think that's a mystery no one can solve. What's that? Uh, MGK, Machine Gun Kelly. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'm He's, too old. Uh... For that stuff. <laughs> Well, the, the only reason he came on my radar is because he was talking shit about my favorite band, Slipknot. <laughs> <laughs> He's a genius uh, of promoting. He just promotes. He he, yeah. got, he almost got in a fight with Conor McGregor on a red carpet, and then he did that. Oh, and, he's, and then, uh, yeah, it's he's all over the place. Well, man, it's really dangerous messing with the maggots. <laughs> Fans of Slipknot will cut you. <laughs> Maggots versus Juggalos. Who wins? Mm, I don't know. Juggalos are pretty dangerous. The only time I've ever broken my phone in a mosh pit was at uh, <laughs> <laughs> was at a Juggalo event. Uh oh. God damn. I don't even remember the name of the band. That's what's that's what's like the worst part about it. It was such a forgettable event, except for. Like someone kicked me in my ass and my phone broke. <laughs> I toured with a uh, anybody killer who was a juggler who was on ICP's label, and yeah. and uh, Cottonmouth Kings who toured oh. with them and who's friends with them. Like, and it was all jugglos. And then they had like a, a, a another band called Zebrahead, and then us and those guys did not 
want to see us. It was an entire room full of kids with clown makeup throwing shit at us. And we got spit on all kinds of, it was terrible. One time in Denver, I felt like, bah, 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 and this kid threw, <laughs> threw about $3 and quarters uh, <laughs> and hit me in the face. Yeah. I was pissed. And I could see him in the middle of the crowd. The place was sold out. And I could see him in the middle of the crowd. And he was going, ha, 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 I got you. And I wanted to jump out there and kill this guy. Uh, but I would have been destroyed by all the clowns. And, uh, and yeah, it was, it was really frustrating. Oh, uh, and then the next we played two days at this place, and the next day uh, we didn't say one word. We walked out and introduced ourselves and didn't talk or anything between shows. Then I felt really bad because this kid was like, "Dude, I've seen you guys like thirty-five times, and this was the worst show I've ever seen you play." And I was like, uh, "We went up there kind of like jerks, and uh, and ended up cheating our our one person that was there to see us out of a good show, and they also paid for all of these bands and and just to see us, you know what I mean? Like, and yeah. so yeah, so I feel bad. But anyway, long story short, um, yeah, I'm not a fan of Juggalos. No, Juggalos will fuck you up. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, uh, also, uh, uh, our guitar player saw some kid in the bathroom crying, wipe, wiping his makeup off. It was like, and he was like. F those guys like wiping this clown makeup off oh, and, wow. he, and and dust was like what's up man he's like those guys suck and he's, and he's like and he dustin's like dude don't ever let anybody make you feel like that dude you look seem like a good guy he's like you know you def- f those guys don't ever let anybody make you feel like that and he's like thanks for saying that man and he's like you know i saw you guys play earlier you guys fucking suck but you're a cool dude <laughs> 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 oh, that was pretty funny. Ouch. I thought you guys were oh. a bunch of Yeah, it was pretty funny. <laughs> this is the pup that barks at Edward every time oh. he talks. The whole when he talks, only when he talks. Really? <laughs> is that a yeah, Visla? So funny. She's a mixed pup. Uh she's a beautiful pitbull and what else? And lab mixed. Oh, that's adorable. Yeah, she's a good looking dog. Grandma's over there fixing some food. <laughs> That's my daughter's dog. We watch it pretty much all the time. So, <laughs> oh, that's adorable. Yeah, she's a good-looking dog. Raj is back. Grandma's. Yeah, sorry about that. We Just inside connection. Watch it pretty much all the time. So. <laughs> it's a beautiful dog. Um, yeah, you got it. Yeah, she's good looking. Echo. Raj is back. Raj is back. Got an echo. Echo. Yeah, you gotta turn the volume down on your on your uh, computer and put some headphones in. I, I did that. It cycles through and then plays again and plays again. And when it's your first time doing a YouTube thing, it like uh, makes you crazy. Right. Makes you crazy, makes you crazy, makes you crazy, and it's like wah, 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 wah. next thing you know, it's like a dubstep video. Wah, wah. Transformers are having intercourse. Wah, 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 wah. That's like when Spooky and I try and uh, stream at the same time when we're playing video games. Oh yeah, yeah. We get that feedback, Oko, cool. because we don't have the awesome audio setup you do. I got a pretty crazy setup in here. I was like looking around yeah. and I was like, dude, that way, look that way. I spend too look much money on equipment. Oh man, it looks amazing. And I'm, I'm sure everything oh, works great. Oh, you know, it's man. awesome. <laughs> is that, is that where uh, you do your audio engineering? Back there is, I, I have a, I have a different setup for oh, recording music and I have like this computer over here, an iMac up there. Oh, fancy. fancy. Yeah. And then... Oh. Is he hitting the fan? (laughs) And then over here, I got my computer. Sweet. And I have a mic over there where I usually have Dustin right over there sitting right over here when I do the other show. And uh, that, I got a soundboard <laughs> over here. 
and I got a TV monitor over there. I have my Sennheiser vocal mic there. Then, oh, I can't go that far because of the cord. Just, but then I got more stuff down there too, compressors and all kinds of crap. Beautiful. That it all you can see the lights moving. It uh goes my, my stuff goes through there. So, wow. <laughs> Pretty cool. If you'd like equipment. Uh, from a certain wow. uh, iPhone, so. Yeah, and that what's what's even funnier about that is I don't need any of this shit. All I all I need is an, <laughs> I, all I need is an iPhone and that mic mm -hmm. that I tell everybody to get to get that Audio Technica uh two thousand five. Yeah, two thousand five and uh and get a uh get a Logitech camera uh C nine twenty for for somebody on facebook you could probably buy one for 20 25 bucks yeah um and that's and that's, that's all you need that's all you need i don't need any of that crap but i got it <laughs> yeah true story Cool. Anybody else got anything fun to say? <laughs> Cassie's just gonna break into your house tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. I didn't show you the shotgun that's in, 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 in the corner. Are. I know where you live. <laughs> yeah, careful, bro. He's in Texas. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to be doing break-ins in Texas. Yeah, you don't want to look in the closet. <laughs> No, that's where I keep the bodies. Yeah. Hey, I thought that was a body down there. The uh, green sweater with uh, what might be a pig stuffed animal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> At first, I did think that was uh, someone passed out. That's No, that's the green screen that I drape. I drape across. Oh, I, have hooks, I have hooks on the ceiling back here, and, I, and I'll, I'll drape a green screen behind me when yeah. I don't want to. Cool. Man. Show off your goods. Yeah. My green screen is way back there. Can't tell. It's so dark. Is it dark or is he using effects? <laughs> yeah, I mean that stuff doesn't look cheap at all. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so when exactly did you guys start robbing banks or support this stuff? I just don't have any kids or a girlfriend or a wife, so yeah. <laughs> Fair rock star. I, I don't have any kids. <laughs> No, I, 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 I just don't want them. So, yeah. <laughs> so, oh, so. shit. Look, Clint. Yeah. All right, we're doing this. I'm like a 21-year-old. That's ridiculous. <laughs> cool, man. I think, yeah, man. Clint's yeah, stealing yeah. the screen over here. Yeah. yeah, I don't like that. This one makes me look fat. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Uh, oh, you're such a prima donna. No, 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 not from the not from the left side. Yeah, I, this is my good side. <laughs> like Tom Hanks, you know. It is. I saw Tom Hanks doing an interview, and he 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 pulled a thing where he's like, "Check this out. I have two faces." And then he he held this up, and okay, we know that guy. And then he's like, whoop, "Boom!" And it looks like another guy, but it's also familiar Tom Hanks face that we know. It's real. It's weird. <laughs> True story. Yeah. Yeah. Appar apparently, that's that isn't BS. Apparently, yeah, that's kind of a scientific thing, right? Everyone has a good side, I guess. I don't. Know. I, don't I don't have a good side, man. What are you talking about? <laughs> no. You know, happy at the same time. <laughs> yeah. you know what? As I attempt it, yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ! You know what? Would you, you know what, James? I love you, but like, if someone told me that you, you've got some bodies under your basement, I would actually believe them. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't have that demeanor. No, I'm joking. <laughs> That's okay. I don't mind. No. A little bit of a mystery. <laughs> yeah, I've so seen the bodies. It's true. It's true. Well, you saw my Ontario bodies, but you never saw my Alberta bodies. No, uh -huh. I definitely haven't. A lot more in this province. <laughs> <laughs> a lot more like Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Canadian more like on the loose. 
Yeah, it's funny. The uh, uh, the the provinces that are most like Texas are uh, Quebec and Alberta. Yeah, Clint doesn't like that because it gives Texas a bad name. <laughs> I don't. We we do a, a good enough job of giving ourselves a bad name or <laughs> or defending it. <laughs> or defending it. Yeah, we're like whatever. Yeah, you know, I once had a layover in Texas on the way to Los Angeles. Uh, people say that seem pretty cool. Um, They're super cool. Yeah, yeah. It's, just, it's just a very cavalier about guns and stuff. Like, Obviously, in the UK, we, ju we just don't have them. So it's a bit of a culture shock. I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't imagine many fights breaking up with, with the amount of guns that are out there, right? Like, you just wouldn't risk yeah, it, right? I, a lot of that's media, man. It's, I mean, yeah. people people are fans. Of, I mean, I, I like to target shoot. I grew up go, going hunting. There's a lot of people that go hunting and stuff when they're kids. You just grow up... Uh, being out in the country and and shooting guns and then you grow up with guns and you're not scared of them if your grandpa showed you how to respect it and and yeah. uh, and that's how you were raised you know what i mean and so and then you know and then in our constitution that's that's a thing too is, is that's supposed to you're supposed to have them and that's supposed to be backup if you're if your government goes goes crazy of course this laws were written you know a long time hundreds of years ago but it but that's supposed so. to be the deal we're supposed to have guns so it, it like and if somebody comes and tries to take them they're there that's sketchy because they're, they're, they must be up to something and that's just a culture that we've we've been raised with because yeah. we've we've yeah. had them um mm. and like you don't have a bunch of people running around i mean you'll have somebody if it's some kind of protest or like somebody's trying to make a point then maybe they'll have somebody shows up to the capitol with you know or something like right. it, you know yeah. but but in general people <laughs> people are uh, i'm talking about the austin uh not the, not the uh, washington dc capital i'm talking about the austin capital but i'm saying it, but in general that's just something that somebody's got in their bed or uh, under their you know bed or in their closet or in their nightstand you know what i mean and it's just that's just normal uh yeah. here because yeah. you know, yeah. in canada though it's like in ontario there wasn't not so many people were so pro gun, and then I moved here to Alberta, and like everyone has a gun, you know. Yeah. So I think that's why we call it the Texas of Canada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I say Quebec because the the, the the ones that are like trying to become a republic. Uh, I just call Quebec yeah. the step the, the redheaded stepchild of Canada. <laughs> yeah, Texas. Just... Texas is just like, oh, you're gonna break into my house? Try it, and everybody knows what that means. So they're, they're yeah. like, you know what? Probably shouldn't do that. The place, like, you know, you got other places. Uh, the United States is saturated with guns, so you, mm. you got places where they're like, uh, uh, we don't want those. That's where you really have problems because the people that are, that would break the law, uh, that like, that are like, oh, you have an ordinance where you don't want guns around. That's not stopping some people, you know what I mean? Like me, yeah. I'm a I'm a respectful uh, law-abiding citizen, but if you got somebody who's a criminal, that all of a sudden only the criminals have guns, then it's like, uh-oh. Um, that's a that's a scary situation, but uh yeah. whatever, man. I just mind my own business and and if I go out to my my parents uh my parents have a bunch of land out in the country, I can go shoot some blow up some watermelons or something. Yeah. And <laughs> and skeet yeah. yeah, and I'll and I'll go to the gun range and do target practice sometimes, but but you know, I mean, you know, every yeah. six months or something, I don't really. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, I mean, I can't have seen. Sorry, right. James. No, I just want to. Um... <laughs> I just looked over at James's screen. <laughs> okay, <Christ>. so <laughs> the amount of I don't know if we want to get on this subject or not. That's the problem. Yeah. But like, mm. okay, so. Estimate Juicy. of civilian firearms per 100 persons, uh, 120 uh, firearms per 100 people in America. In Canada, it's 34 firearms per 100 people. Yeah, and, I'd say that sounds about right. Yeah, and uh, and then if you look up like the the related deaths and shootings, it's there's a lot more in America than there is in Canada and in yeah. and in England and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. that's all well it's a it's yeah. a per capita thing you know yeah but see so yeah see you know the, everything that you guys are saying i mean it makes so much sense i mean obviously a lot with canada and america i mean you guys are so unique in terms of the culture around guns like like obviously me being the outside brit i mean my assumption oh, yeah. 
Yeah, well, I mean, my assumption always was is that, you know, it's part of the culture, it's part of you know, growing up, it's nothing too out of the ordinary. I mean, if I was to make an educated guess, I guess maybe the disparity between Canada and America, it's more culture more than access to guns, I'd mm. assume. Yeah, yeah you know? like, um, we, we, we still use guns. Like, there's there's a huge demographic of, of hunters in this country. Yeah. And they, they all have at least six rifles. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I got a yeah. bunch of friends that like to go to the gun range, you know, and I got yeah. I got friends here in town that say, hey, come over to my house and we'll shoot some pistols and shoot some guns and stuff. And Heck, yeah. my, my, uh, my Uncle Cam, would, you know, he had a shotgun and, and a bunch of other guns and stuff. He got rid of them eventually, but, you know, it's, it was... It was more well known in like the the fifties, the forties, fifties, and sixties. You know, now there's yeah. not so much of a need, I think. And a lot of the gun crime yeah. is um, uh, illegal weapons yeah. that that come over from the states or or come over from other countries, right? Uh, yeah. That end up or here. going to the states, basically. yeah, or going like vice versa, right? So, mm -hmm. um, but I'm I'm fascinated by firearms because like I would. I like drawing them in my comic books, you know. So I <laughs> yeah. like studies. Like I know a lot about guns, but I've I've never I never really use them, right? Except the one that's in my lockbox. That's a different story. So that's <laughs> it's next to the bodies, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, there, there's nothing like uh, like cracking open a shotgun after you've fired it and getting the smell of cordite. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, oh. you so you guys are a bad influence because all I want to do right now is just take a plane and just shoot some guns now. Knock it off, you two! This is a live stream. <laughs> if you're ever in, in Austin, uh, I'll take you to the gun range. Mm. Cool. Yeah. Be, yeah, I'll be done. I've, done. I've seen uh, Europeans uh, that that have never been around guns before at the gun range, and they're like. Oh my god, this is awesome! Like, it. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. You know what? I, I do think though that you know, I, I just don't think if like Britain, if we had guns, I just in a lot of ways, I think we'd just be worse. I just like, I think yeah. we, we no, honestly, because like, no, I agree, I agree. No, it's just like honestly, like people like nights out, people just getting a fist fights over nothing. Mm -hmm. So you know, after a few drinks, can you imagine if there were guns? I mean. Like, I don't, I don't want to get too political, but like oh, in yeah. a lot, but in a lot of ways, like the UK is it's kind of the America of Europe in a lot of ways. Mm. And well, I don't mean I don't are open like twenty four seven, right? So, sorry, what was that? Your pubs are open twenty four seven. Um, some of them are, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But I mean, that's a whole different conversation. I don't, I'm not against that. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. I'm definitely. Well, I'm going. I'm, I'm going to a house party tomorrow. I'm getting absolutely wrecked. So. Mm. I said, well, I've earned it. So, we, look, honestly, we're not we're not alcoholics. I'm, I was saying, if you drink less than your doctor, you're okay. Canadians are alcoholics, man. What are you talking about? Yeah, we're like the stepbrother of England, and and we're all alcoholics here. I think our biggest our biggest money maker here is is beer. So, yeah, yeah. I can't so drink right. beer. Beer gives me a headache. No, I'm native Canadian, German, Scottish, and Irish. So I can't drink it all anymore. It's in my blood. I'm always drunk. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, just um yeah, we we all have that one alcohol that we can't drink, right? It just mm. it turns us into terrible people. Vodka. Well, this one gives me a headache as soon as I take a sip. I believe I'm allergic to hops. So, <laughs> yeah, oh, that's possible. Too. That's entirely oh, that's possible. Horrible. That's another thing but, I think I'm allergic to. Yeah. It's a bad reaction. It, I drink. It, it like bloats me super bad and I get a headache like after I take two or three sips of a beer. But I can drink whiskey. Canadian whiskey. <laughs> Shaken, not stirred. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Wait, <Shaken. laughs> I don't know what year this was, but I found an article because I was looking for it. Oh, this is an old one. I'll have to go back. Uh, it was saying uh, Austin was the seventh drunkest city in, in, the, uh, in the United States. Uh, and it said, uh, in the city of Austin, Texas, 18.4% of the population are binge drinkers. Uh, each month, a person consumes an average of 15.5 drinks. I was like, are you kidding me? I drank that many drinks last night. What are they talking <laughs> yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just, yeah, four drinks over here. Like, you're not even half drunk at that mm. point. I mean, that's just getting the, 
not yep. that's that's yeah. just the beginning of the night, right? So Maybe I don't, British. I feel, yeah. I feel the Yeti. I think I'd go yeah. about like a ten to fifteen pour and then do Coke. Coca Cola, oh, right? Oh, oh that's, yeah. <laughs> maybe four of those. Four of those a night. Coca Cola, right, EJ? Coca Cola. Mm. Cocainum. Okay. Cocainum. Okay. That was perfect Cocainum. time for cocainum too. I would drop the ball on that one. Do it. Pashli, self meste. Okay, vaše dokazatelstvo. Cocainum. That's the Edward oh, Cocainum. Got treated to an Edward Cocainum. You know. mm -hmm. That's still the creepiest thing yeah. I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, reface is pretty crazy. They just can you can you imagine like all the videos that are going to be created now? Oh, they like they'll have all sorts of incriminating stuff, and there's the way the technology is going. Like you'd never be able to oh, tell yeah. whether or not it's real or not, right? It's, no, it's never scary. mind that, man. Just think about the oversaturation that's already started. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Every, yeah, everything is like, it's all oversaturated. Everyone has their own podcast now, you know. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, it's just it's absolutely nuts. And the pandemic really booted up a lot of people's passions to do that, which is fine. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Um, go for your passion, but there's you got to sift through a lot of stuff now. That's why, okay. yeah. And YouTube doesn't make it easy for creators anymore. That's for sure. So. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> Anyways, guys, it's three hours, almost three and a half hours. Uh, Should yeah. we call it? We we certainly can. All right. Cool. Okay, EJ, yeah. where can yeah, people but, find you? Uh, at my house. <laughs> <laughs> right. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, uh, yeah, Raj. I already put your Twitter up there. Cool. Um, yeah, if you guys want to follow me on Instagram, it's uh, Rajnish Sharma Films, one word, or Raj989 is my personal one. Um, I am on Twitter, but I'd avoid it because at the moment I've just been using that for Restore the Snyderverse, and it's, it's, I know it's bad, I know, I know, but I mean, eventually when they, with whatever happens with it, it'll be back to normal. But yeah, that's where you guys can find me. And also, uh, James is kind enough to, share the link to my uh, uh, YouTube page so if you guys can click on that yeah um, just give me a follow follow you back and oh um, before I get the chance I just want to say thank you guys for letting me on the show as well always been you know, big time fun, big time fun any time right cool. yeah okay Plum got, sorry I've go got ahead Raj's stuff queued up right here I'm going to watch this as soon as we get done with this stream here so nice nice hmm. cool and you can find me at uh, at Daniel Plum on Twitter. Um, yeah, Twitter. Daniel Plum and, one. Oh, is it Daniel Plum one? Daniel mm -hmm. Plum one. Oh, is it? Mm -hmm. Doesn't look like it. I don't know. I'm looking at it right now. <laughs> I'm looking at it with my eyes. Daniel Plum lost. Get it? He won. He lost. Come on. Did guys. you change it? Did you change it? <laughs> Because no. I checked before I put up the latest video, man. No, Dan Plum won. Is... No, I'm not, not going to say that. It was. <laughs> you <laughs> totally changed it. It was uh, the one at the end of it. I swear. Anyways. On. Anyways, no, it's right. You're right. It's Daniel Plum now. <laughs> what the heck? Did we just get a Mandela a... effect or something? <laughs> no, you just, you're mistaking it for another method of contacting me. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, is that your OnlyFans? Uh, yeah. yes, <laughs> yes. Find me on OnlyFans at uh, Dan Plum One. <laughs> it's not the real Plum. Get him. <laughs> All right. You can find me at Small Screen Co. Forty Two Cut Com. Uh, Gigasi Mag. And. Uh, Anything Editing. <laughs> Editing. <Yeah. laughs> Chain to your desk. <laughs> <laughs> you can find me at uh, Cinemark uh, Theaters watching uh, uh, One Night and Last Night in Soho. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Some night in Soho. <laughs> uh, I almost said One Night in Paris, but uh, 
the um yeah clint baker the og clint baker on youtube uh you could read i can't even read anymore but uh you could find uh, that at both instagram and twitter and uh and that's me uh when i woke up this morning so uh yeah come catch us tuesday nights and uh thursday nights and yeah so thank you guys everybody who hung out for this long three hours and 20 uh, 26 minutes and 53 seconds that's a long long stream mm -hmm. yeah also a long time code yes <laughs> <laughs> thank cool story bro <laughs> oh it sanchez or you'll get a knuckle supper Oh, yeah. is this where I'm supposed to say, what is all this about? And he says, uh, shut up, I asked the question. Yeah. And special thanks to Tom DeFalco for being such a fantastic guest and everybody in the yeah, chat for asking awesome. great questions. This, yeah, this was definitely a fun stream. Yeah, so, we, kind, we kind of ruined that awesome interview with the, the end of the stream. <laughs> <laughs> you, just go, you just go edit it out <laughs> edit the end of this. Yeah. Like yeah. we did with the celebration stream. Yeah. yeah. Make it, you, as soon as Edward leaves. Yeah, make it. That sounds like a good breakout video. Is just go cut out that, that interview and, and get rid of all this. Yeah. I think the big mistake was just letting anyone on. Like anyone. No way. No way. We'll just have we'll just have a, a breakout video of that. Yeah. There, there you go. Yeah. There's Bobby. One last time for Bobby. Bobby. Your nephew or grandson. Yeah. Okay, hey guys, thank you so much for all being on here. Oh, yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you for watching, everyone. And uh, you can find Spooky on uh, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, and uh, YouTube soon. And uh, Kazax, yeah, that is three Doom Patrol episodes. So now you have to go watch three Doom Patrol episodes. You have to catch up to me. Yep, and catch us Sunday for a uh, entertainment news uh broadcast Sunday afternoon. So we will see you guys soon. <laughs> <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> Catch us Sunday for an entertainment <laughs> news broadcast. Mm. Make it or else. Oh, where'd he go? No, I think he had... decided to jet. No, that's it. No, we're not we're not ending the stream until he comes back. Come on. <laughs> Just wait here. So you guys doing anything for Halloween? Uh, I'm probably editing. Just watching movies. Probably. We'll be editing up until Sunday morning. And then probably watching stuff. Cool. So. Hey, My look. son doesn't want to go trick-or-treating. Answering for a friend. Thursday nights. Go subscribe. We're not... We're not Ending the show, Clint, until you come back. So, <laughs> yeah, just yell at him. That's him. That'll make him come back. Just I'm keep yelling. <laughs> 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 oh, right. Uh, not that I've been streaming much lately, but uh, you could also find me at Twitch TV uh, slash Dan Plum. Diablo 2. Yeah, playing a 20-year-old game that still feels <laughs> clunky. <laughs> yeah, we're all been there, man. It's showtime. There he is. Hi, Clint. Hey, gang. <laughs> Had to go refill his drink cup. <laughs> what you drinking? Thanks for watching. Hello and welcome to MCM Comic Con here in London. This is Small Screen coming to you on YouTube, I think. Are we doing this on YouTube? Yeah. It's producer Freddy in the background. Huh? Yeah, it's my thing. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, follow us on Small Screen Co. everywhere Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. Twitter and uh, I hope you guys like the show and see you very soon. Bye. YouTube? Oh, I guess I'm supposed to leave now. Oh, are you? Oh. Everyone's it won't let me so do. confused. Oh. There we go. <laughs>
It won't let me leave. <laughs> I'm hitting 